so we are going to call to order a uh, special public meeting for the um, for the purpose of discussion of uh, possible purchase of a gravel pit um, for the towns of Putney and Dummerston. Um, and we have, I don't know whether you want to start, Karen, maybe with a with I a think, run through slideshow? Yeah, we or? can talk through each slide. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have those in front of me, do I? Or do I? I mean, I have to you have I, the brochure? I've seen, yeah, yeah, same, yeah. same as the... Yeah, yeah. it's I've, pretty much the same them, as the brochure. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. So, uh, this came to our attention a number of months ago as a possibility. Um, right, Mike Renaud, who owns the Renaud Pit, um, decided that he was interested in selling uh, the pit. And he approached the towns of Dummerston and Putney to see whether they were interested in purchasing the pit. And so uh, we both agreed, both towns agreed that it was something that we were interested in exploring. And so we engaged um, Corey Frizee of um, of uh, Stevens and Associates, who has done all the permitting work for Mike and for us previously on this pit, as well as the Carpenter Pit, where we currently get our sand from, to explore basically the volumes of materials that were potentially there, um, some of the financial aspects of it, and some of the permitting aspects of it. Um, and so we have been working through that over time. Uh, we had had in the fall of last year, several meetings with myself, uh, Hugh Warden uh, on the Dummerston Select Board, Brian Harlow, Lee Chamberlain, and Karen Astley, our town manager, to uh, just sat, sort of have discussions in a couple of those, or at least one. We also engaged legal counsel mm -hmm. to be there to advise us. Um, as to what the proper steps would be if we were interested in pursuing this. Um, the potential purchase price is $2 million. Um, that would be split between the two towns and, um, and we would then enter into an interlocal municipal agreement to operate the pit together. We as a municipality cannot sell anything at, for commercial purposes out of an operation like that. So essentially what we would be doing is purchasing the pit in order to protect that resource for the two towns for uh, use for, for towns for maintenance of roads and highways. Um, so I might switch over here so I can sort of see what you guys are looking at at the same time. Um, sure, you can pull this chair over. First slide. Oh, let me see that. Um, so this is just an overview of sort of the current status of sand and gravel resources in the state right now. Um, the, the, basically the purpose of this slide is to uh, demonstrate that um, there are six sand and gravel operations that currently operate commercially on a, on a full-time basis, and this is one of them. Um, there are a number of smaller pits that operate on various different commercial level, levels, but none of them, I believe, uh, <coughs> sell to municipalities. Um, and we have been buying, uh, just to go back in the history a little bit, uh, the towns of Dummerston and Putney uh, got together with Mike Renaud when he purchased this pit roughly six to eight years ago, I would say. And we supported financially the process of getting the Act 250 approval. He did all the work related to that. Each of the towns put about 75,000 bucks into that at that time. And then we had a contractual agreement with uh, Renault Brothers to purchase volume, the, the volume of gravel uh, that we use currently on the roads at a uh, discounted price for a period of time that discounted price continues, but has escalated over time as we have used it. Um, it's still a good deal for us, um, but uh, 
Mike is ready to get rid of the pit, and so we're looking at whether um, this makes sense for us. So um, the resources that we would be looking to take out of the pit um, in the short run would be primarily bank run gravel, um, which we use mostly as a sort of partially crushed product for the uh, for working on roads and maintenance of roads, but not, we wouldn't use it for sand. We currently contract with the Carpenter family to buy sand from them for use for sanding for weather like we're having. Um, and we, there, we believe both of the towns are involved in that pit as well. We've worked together on that one since the beginning as well. So we have a strong relationship with Dummerston and working together on these various pits. We believe there's probably uh, in the ballpark of 12 to 14 more years of material in the carpenter pit until that's exhausted, but that is strictly sand. Um, and so if Mike were to sell and the Renault pit were to become unavailable to us or material from that pit were to become unavailable, we would have to look elsewhere for a gravel material as well as um, larger stone, crushed stone that we use primarily for protection of uh, roadside uh, ditches. ditches and, and uh, we've used quite a bit of it in the, in the um, culvert projects that we've done over the last couple of years for riprap on the sides, et cetera. We use, each of the towns uses somewhere in the ballpark of 1,500 yards of that crushed ledge material per year, um, and that would continue to be available to us as well. So, uh, if, if this were to get approved, um, we would then need to, and this is a this is an article from the floor at town meeting. We would also need to approve entering into what's called an interlocal municipal agreement, which is basically just a state ratified agreement between the two towns to engage in an enterprise together. Um, but the basic what we're really here to discuss is the the vote on Article 8, which will be by Australian ballot, and it's just a yes or no vote as to whether the two towns are interested in buying this parcel for $2 million um, and each of the towns putting in a million. So um, uh, if Article 8 is rejected, then the purchase and sales, we are signing tonight or agreeing there. Dummerston is signing tonight and we are approving tonight, presumably, signature of a purchase and sales agreement, which enters us into uh, allowing us to purchase the pit. It does not commit us to the pit until after the vote. If, if the vote is in the affirmative, i.e. if we vote yes to purchase this, then that would um, make that sales and purchase and sales agreement valid and we would then continue and go to the Vermont Bond Bank to borrow a million bucks. Uh, we hope in the range of somewhere between 3.85 and four and a quarter percent is what we've, it, it all depends on the timing and the cycle and so on and so forth. So, um, but somewhere in that range of 4% in order to borrow a million dollars. Um, and then we would anticipate, because of the timing of that bond issuance, we would anticipate that we would have that money in hand in August, and at that time we would actually purchase the pit, and Mike would stop using the pit at that time. So these are site plans for uh, the, I mean, it, it's really two different pits that were merged over time. Um, most of you will be familiar, most familiar, with looking at this from Route 91 when you're traveling south towards Brattleboro. You come across the cornfield and the, the Moore Farm, the old hangar, um, and then up above that, the several new houses and the pit that they've been working on. The access to that is two, there's two accesses. Right One is from uh, Route 5, through the ABF Trucking Depot, 
um, and we would be maintaining. That would be our primary access. And then there's another one that is uh, off of what's called Winterbell Drive, which is off of June Station Road, is that right? Station Road, which is um, the road that goes off to the east when you're down in the dip between the Walker Farm and um, and that level area where ABF is. Um, so you go in that <coughs> way and then you turn off and go into the pit from there. Um, uh, the assessed value for Dummerston is 694000 with the ABF property, I'm assuming that wants yes. to be, yes. um, with the ABF property um, and so their tax revenue from that is just under $13,000 a year. The ABF property is probably the most valuable component of that because of the structures on it. There's one structure down in the pit as well, but the way the property would be divided, we would not own that structure that Micronode wants to continue to own. Um, but it allows us access through the ABF property. Um, so uh, presumably Dummerston would forgive its own tax revenue from that and we would pay Dummerston half of the revenue of whatever the assessed value of the pit would become. It hasn't been subdivided and reviewed by their listers yet so we don't know, I don't believe, mm, no, exactly that what that number would be. Um, somewhere in the range of probably four thousand bucks a year, um, yeah, but because it would be less guess. than it would be less than half of that because because of the value of the ABF property right. coming off it. But that's just a guess. So, um, but these two pits were then when Mike initially bought the one that you access through the ABF, previously known as the Hidden Acres pit, um, mm -hmm. and the SB pit, which was previously known as the Moore pit, is the one that's further north. The two of them, Mike then purchased that from, um, from the folks who own the SB. So now it essentially, although it has two separate Act 250 permits, it functions as a single pit for all practical purposes. Um, the approximate acreage is 32 plus or minus. Um, and the volumes that uh, Stevens and Associated Associates uh, put to the material that's in it, currently 100,000 cubic yards of gravel, 200,000 of sand, 400,000 of ledge product in the <coughs> Renaud pit, and 200,000 in the what was previously the SB pit. It's about 4,000 yards of cubic of topsoil. Um, were primarily reserved for the purpose of reclamation of the pit upon its being finished at the end. And then uh, right now there are mis miscellaneous stockpiles in the amount of approximately 90,000 cubic yards. Um, that Mike will be, has, I don't know whether he currently has any municipal contracts other than ours, he would be selling some of that stockpile over the next six months, if we are, if we do end up purchasing it, we don't know exactly how much would be left of that. The vast majority of that is processed material, which he has paid to process. So it, he, he has money in it that he would be looking to reclaim. But there would be some amount of that stockpile left. Um, as it is right now, uh, the two towns um, each of the towns uses approximately 5,000 cubic yards of gravel per year, uses approximately 4,000 yards of sand per year, and as I said, somewhere in the range of 1,000 to 1,500 yards of the crushed, uh, crushed ledge material. The crushed ledge material is by far the most expensive to extract from the pit. Um, it is the majority of the material that's left, but even the sand and gravel that's there are significant amounts. And we'll go through, we have the um, spreadsheet on, uh, mm -hmm. on the volumes and what that looks like as far as time and money are concerned for us. But um, 
it's the opinion of Stevens and Associates that within a, an undefined period of time, um, most towns are going to be using a crushed product of some sort just because there isn't going to be sand and gravel available anymore as the number of pits decreases and it gets harder and more expensive to extract material. So um, that, ma that ledge material that's there um, mostly is still in the form of intact ledge. Some of it has been blasted, some of it has been crushed, but not large volumes of it. It is all um, state certified for highway projects, which is valuable to us because, for example, there's new regulations which we have to upgrade our roads and our drainage, et cetera, um, and we, are, we have to use state certified stone ledge in order to do those projects. For other infrastructure projects, et cetera, it being certified is of value to us. It also, in my opinion, would add value to that if we were to get to the point where we used all the sand and gravel and wanted to sell the pit, that ledge would still have significant value to um, somebody else who was doing highway projects. So, um, and I, I know June would say, and I would tend to agree with him, that the, uh, when you take that ledge product and turn it into Surepack, it's not the highest of quality sure pack that we would like it to be. The crushed stone in larger aggregate that we use for various other things is a good product. Um, we don't use a tremendous amount of sure pack because that's typically a top dressing material for things like driveways, etc. cetera. Um, this, the way, just whether it's the nature of the stone or the processing isn't 100% clear to me, it doesn't, when it's crushed into Surepack, it doesn't bind particularly well, and so it's a slightly loose material. The biggest value in it for us is to be able to mix it with the other natural product material that's there. Um, you know, when you blast, you, they call it fluffing, um, you get even, you know, if you have 400 yards of solid intact ledge, or 400,000 yards, when you blast it, it increases by I think ballpark 20%, somewhere in that range, much of that fluffing ends up being small pieces that sort of chip off and become a, a, a less clean product, but perfect for mixing with other aggregate in order to come up with a nice product that binds well. The, the product I personally prefer out of this pit currently is what they call an inch and a quarter crushed bank run, but they mix it with some ledge and it's a mix of everything from inch and a quarter stones down to fine dust, um, and it binds very well. It's a nice, it's a nice product for road building. I'm guessing that's the one we use primarily for, for our roads. Um, handsome fellow here in the middle picture there, <laughs> wandering around in the pit. We've been through. We looked at the highest point. At the highest point. Right. Um, and it's, you know, these estimates are based on Corey Frizee's understanding of um, what the previous studies, which had borings, et cetera, in them, as well as observing, doing current test pits, et cetera. He believes all of these to be fairly conservative estimates, and he can't guarantee us the numbers on any of them, but he feels, if anything, they are low. <coughs> Um, so, advantages of owning it, uh, you know, from our perspective or from my perspective, I think the single largest advantage is that it secures a local source for us for these materials. Mm -hmm. um, they're the next closest pit that we currently are able to purchase out of is in Vernon, Sir Sassimo, um, and then also Cold River, which is over in Walpole. Both of those involve significant trucking. We figured, um, I think Brian figured this out, or Lee, who's the highway department head in <coughs> Dummerston, that if we were to truck the amount of gravel and sand material that we need from a location in Vernon, that would represent about a half a man year. So six months of somebody driving full time and a truck going back and forth to be able to move that material. So when you think about the expense of that, 
basically a half year salary plus the cost of the material plus the cost of the trucking. Um, you know, it, the, the further we have to go for material, the more expensive it gets, definitely. Plus benefits for your employee. Plus benefits for the employee, plus yeah. wear and tear on the truck, plus mm -hmm. fuel, and so on. Right. Um, you know, one of the most sort of uh, up in the air aspects of the value of this going forward is that um, gravel and uh, particularly crush, but any sort of processed gravel product and the movement of said product is highly dependent on fossil fuel and so costs of fuel have a big influence on costs of material as well. Um, uh, so we think that it would um, be a cost effective, essentially how this breaks down for us is that um, it, it will up people's taxes for a period of approximately 13 years, um, which is essentially the same time frame that I've talked about for us using sand out of the gravel pit, out of the sand pit um, that belongs to the carpenter family. Once that's exhausted and we were moving into this pit to use sand, the tax burden from that would start to decrease. And um, we believe that, so the, essentially for the next 13 years, there would be an increase in taxes of, and we have that on a spreadsheet, right. it's all based on the value of your property, obviously. But then after that 13 to 15 year period, uh, the taxes would start to decrease. And of course, that's only the taxes on, that are related to the purchase of highway maintenance material so I, you know we can't I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you your taxes are going to go down in 13 years because I'm sure they're not going to um, but that portion of your taxes would go down um, we think that um, with the bond the bond would be a 25 year bond because that seems to be the, the sort of the best compromise for us between best interest rate, time payment, et cetera. Um, and we believe that probably right around the same time that the bond was paid off, i.e. in the range of 24 years, we would start to recoup the overall investment of the purchase of the pit. Um, so, our, you know, the tax, the, the implication for taxes is on a, a peaks in about 13 years. The implication for return on investment is more like 25 years. Um, from that point out, uh, you know, the, there's a couple things that are a little bit up in the air about it, the, as far as what the value on return for us going forward from there. One of the biggest, in my opinion, is that as it is right now, the floor of the pit, meaning the low point we can go to in the pit, um, Keep going, Alice. Is set at a certain height, and that's based on water table, etc. Um, we have reason to believe that the water table is significantly. It, there, there's no indication that the water table in that area is at risk at all, which means we would be likely to be able to reapply for a. a um, different Act 250 permit that would allow us to drop the floor of the pit by a certain amount um, and dig deeper essentially, that would buy us a whole lot more sand and natural gravel. And that, I, I think there, that probably is one of sort of the biggest factors of where the longer term value is because at about 25 years out, we're mostly going to be looking at crushed ledge product anyway, um, which has disadvantages for us, as I said, because of the, the product you get for it, but also it's just not an ideal product. It's expensive to extract. It's not an ideal product for road base unless you're mixing it with natural <coughs> material. So I think my hope would be that at some point we would be able to get an, a different permit in order to drop the pit. That would extend the natural product, which would extend the value of the ledge. Um, Looking at strictly the numbers that are there for how long it's going to last us, the two towns using product as they do currently 
Um, the pit, if we were to use everything in there that's currently estimated, we're looking at about 2088. Um, so we're looking in a you know 50 to 60 year horizon. Um, the the uh, amounts of natural gravel and sand are a little bit hard to accurately pinpoint because veins of sand and gravel can wander. Um, but we feel that by mixing uh, crushed product with it, we can extend the life of those natural products for a long time, probably in the range of the next 40 years at least. Um, a little bit up for debate on that one. It's hard to say because you just don't know exactly what's in there. But that would also depend on on our ability to get that <coughs> 250 permit altered. So um, I think that's most, oh, and yeah, disadvantages, oh yeah, budget. Disadvantages um, of not owning it. Um, the carpenter pit where we get our sand from will be exhausted in about 14 years, 12 to 14. Um, we don't know. I, I have heard strictly anecdotally that there are other party parties, outside parties, that would be interested in purchasing this pit from Mike if he were to put it on the market. Um, we would have, other than we have contractual agreement with Mike for another roughly five years. It for was ten, right, Brian? Ten, so. ten. Ten more. Yes for purchasing at, at the somewhat discounted price that we purchase for now, if somebody right. purchased the pit, um, they would have to stand by at least a certain amount of that. Um, and then, uh, but what we don't know if somebody else purchased it, uh, if they were selling commercially, how long that resource is gonna last because it's basically a 10 year window for us unless the pit becomes exhausted in right. which case we are no longer buying a discounted product. Um, so the pit is limited to, each side of the pit is limited to extracting 30,000 yards per year. Um, that's by the permitting. So, uh, you know, depending on how they focus, there's roughly 300,000 yards of natural material in the, in the Renault pit portion of it. So if they were to go strictly on ledge in the SB portion and the uh, and on natural material in the SB pit portion or in the Renault pit portion it would be exhausted inside of 10 years um, and then again we're looking at further distances and looking for material at hopefully reasonable costs which we can't predict um, budget comparison um, this uh, kind of blue is us if we were to own it. Blue is town of Putney. And Dunderston. Um, and, and Dunderston together. Yeah, yes. um, and um, and then if it's if it were to become commercially operated, and of course, you know, some of this again, as I said, because it's all very fossil fuel driven, um, some of this is speculation. But as you can see, essentially if we were to own it in the blue, our costs would say stable for roughly the next 25 years and then um, drop that drop is based on that possibility of lowering the pit floor um, it also is the time when the uh, when the bond when we stop paying the bond right um, so there would be sort of two sides of potential savings in there um, but then the fact that that blue increases after that is mostly reflecting the fact that we would be using primarily ledge product, which is just more expensive for us. Hang on one minute. Howard, and we'll, um, the commercially operated is in orange and uh, those numbers are, and these are overall budgets for the town. So we think that budget for material purchase would stay reasonably stable out through that 25 year period at roughly 150,000. Um, if we were to exhaust that in the 10 year, 10 to 15 year period, if that were to be exhausted and we were buying commercially, mm -hmm. that's where you're gonna to start to see that steep increase in in the cost of commercial product that Three we're to six purchasing. Percent. So, um, uh, 
that's probably most of the information that that's I have. Oh, sure. the tax. Yep. Do, and do we do we have that tax chart on a slide or not? We do. Yes. Um, right here. So this guy shows. That's what I was talking right. about. Of uh, so all the the different colors represent the different value, value of yep. a homestead. So it's obviously based on the value of your home. Um, but in the short run, uh, taxes are going to go up um, most for the first five years, yeah. then drop back down, and then for about another 10 years after that. And on a $500,000 home, those taxes are going to go up uh, to roughly $400 <coughs> a year. So it's about $80 per year per 100000 is that right? I think it is. Maybe not quite. No. Yeah. I think that's too high. Right? That is too high. Sorry. Yes. Wait a minute. How do, so wait. How do we have that? So. Five hundred. That must be a must print. So uh, no tax increase. This we have. Now here's your five hundred thousand right here. And then what year you looking at? We're looking at uh, so on a hundred thousand dollar home. In the first year, it's six dollars and fifty-five cents per hundred thousand of value. The second year, because it's we then start paying the, the bond, right. we would your your taxes would increase about twenty-five. Sorry, I misspoke. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of the larger number. Um, uh, about twenty-five dollars per hundred thousand dollars of value, um, and there are copies of this spreadsheet over here. Um, for anybody that's interested. And this, most of this, the, the numbers, the volume of numbers for material are all for the two towns together. So those reflect mm -hmm. the time frames of the two towns working together on this. But then the tax implications are, these are the tax implications for the town of Putney, for residents of the town of Putney. Based on so, our current grand list. So over the, um, over that first 15 years, it's going to average roughly a $15 per $100,000 in value increase in taxes. So for a $500,000 home, we're looking at about 75 bucks a year increase because it's increased most in those first four years, as you can see, and then it starts to drop down. So. Um, and if anybody has specific questions about that and their value, um, we can try and answer those for you. But, um, and I think that's most of what we have. Um, it is by Australian ballot, so we will not be discussing the Australian ballot issue from the floor at town meeting. Um, however, we do have the interlocal municipal agreement mm -hmm that um, will be from the floor, and so that will be open for discussion. So I, I haven't quite figured out how we're going to talk about one without talking about the other, but we'll, our moderator is going to work on that for us and have all the answers to that. <laughs> so, um, Do they require acting in the subjunctive mood? I'm going to leave that up to you. Right? Yeah. So, uh, but. Uh, Questions, Mr. Fairman. Could we return to the budget graph, please? Yes. And can people um, say your name? Maybe. What does the red bar represent? The red bar is town of Putney without town of Dummerston. Is that correct? No, that. The it's red bar is commercially operated. Oh, I see. That's just the, yeah. So if that was to remain the Renault pit, mm -hmm. and once it's exhausted in, you know, 10 to 15 years, and we had to buy elsewhere, that's a, that represents a 3 to 6% increase mm -hmm. if we're um, going to travel to pick materials up. Mm -hmm. So... Sorry, I thought you were just talking about in the first 10 years, though, and I, that wasn't clear to me, but right. yes. And you can see it in the orange, orange yeah. in there, too. But Yeah. I have some, uh, some other questions. Should I go ahead with them? Sure. All right. 
Uh, are the pits currently in full compliance with Act 250? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, there is here, uh, well, first I will say, uh, buying the pits, the towns uh, no longer simply pay so much a yard. They are assuming the operating costs and the, and the costs of owning and maintaining the machinery for doing the crushing and doing the loading and so on. Uh, partially correct. Um, they would they would be assuming the expense of uh, owning the pit, um, but we would contract the operations of blasting and crushing. Um, we would then take on the operations of moving the material, but we currently do that ourselves anyway. Actually, my statement is entirely correct because if you contract it, you are assuming the amount. That you You're right, pay. but we wouldn't be doing. We wouldn't be doing it. You you implied that we would be taking on the value of equipment in order to do that. We would not be purchasing any equipment in order to do that. We would be contracting. But you're right. We would be taking on the the expense related to that. That's so, all included in this budget. So a contractor will do the crushing. Correct. All right. Now, uh, given this, that that. The town, it's not only that the town is bonding for a million dollars and is, is going to ensure uh, uh, supply of various aggregates in the, uh, in, in the longer term, the town is incurring expenses and yet I do not see any projected operating budget. There is, it's mm -hmm. all, it's, it's, in, 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 it's in, in, this in this sheet if you want to take yeah. a copy well, of actually, this. Actually, I have reviewed the sheet and I don't see it there, so perhaps you go to Yep. <laughs> I see, uh, let me see, a, a fourth column from the left, I see administrative, administrative O&M, presumably operation and management, starting out in 2020 at $1,000 a year. Yes. Okay. Is that the projected operating budget? No. Okay. Where is it? That is in the numbers over, let's see, one, two, under total budget with purchase of gravel pit. Where are we now? You're like three quarters of the page to the right. Okay. Um, that number mm -hmm. has everything, including the blasting. And you have to remember, Howard, that blasting probably will only happen every five years. Mm -hmm. So you'll see those increases in this column. And then so everything related to operating it is in here, mm -hmm. along yeah. with the um, bond, mm -hmm. um, and then the projected budget without the purchase of the pit would be just Renault running it the way he's doing it now. Right. So those two columns are critical right there. Yes, they are. Do you have an itemization of those uh, figures? For example, first year $79,000, then going up to 123000 and so on. Do you have an itemization of how you arrived at that total? I do not. It's in a formula that um, I don't have it on paper, though. But we, but we have that. Those numbers were arrived at by right. itemizing and coming to the conclusion that that was the expense involved. Right. Well, you have placed Putney voters in a position where we are unable to look critically at the numbers that were at. At this total, because we do not know how the total uh, how the total right. was arrived uh, at, me, uh, and yet we're told that we're not going to be able to discuss it at town meeting. Uh, on the one hand, that may be an omission. On the other hand, it may be nicely played. But either way, we are being left without uh, essential information. That information is available. I mean, it, yeah, you, you come to the town office. Yeah, if I mean, you want to see. What we the were action. trying to do was present a, a big picture, mm -hmm. and if people have smaller, more granular, detailed questions, then we would refer those to no. the town manager. Well, uh, I'll stop by the town office and have a look at it. You have said, however, that the Australian ballot matter cannot be debated at town meeting. That's correct. Uh, so uh, it appears that the information I receive, I will not be able to bring up at town meeting. That's correct. Nicely played. Uh, we didn't play it that way, but thank you for the uh, implication. I, I, You're we, welcome. We're, we're, we're trying to do the best job we can, and I would prefer if we 
kept it civil. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have other questions? Yes, sir. Right. Whoops. And uh, just a question for Brian. Uh, I just wanted to get you to weigh in a little bit on uh, your opinion of the material once you start um, having to process it and everything. Once it's more, uh, you know, alleged that you're breaking down into different uses, is it going to meet your needs? Um, well, <laughs> the, the hope is that we can stretch, stretch the bank run gravel out as far as we can, as I've said. And definitely not, you know, when, when, it's, when it becomes an all ledge product. Yep. It's great for a driveway that gets four cars a day that drives over it. But on a town road that gets 250 cars a day over it, it it's definitely not an ideal product for, the, for a town road. So there's either going to have to be, uh, the hope is to stretch it long enough that, that it would, uh, you know, even out and then... I guess, I guess so. At, at one point, and, and what would you be stretching it with, like crushed limestone or something? No, no, the, the, the regular the regular bank run gravel, mixing okay. the ledge with it. I, you know, I was kind of hoping maybe like a 25%, 75% mix. And you could do the calculation, but it's, you know, there's... It's going to be hard. To, it's really hard to say how much actual material is in there, so it's it's really hard to. It's basically a guess, really, when you when you try to try to an educated guess <laughs> or not so educated a guess, but uh, you know, do the best you can with the slope of the ledge currently, how it's coming, what's uncovered to to try to project what's what's there. So I think that that the the hope would be well. The numbers add up to carry us to roughly that 25-year mark um, for being able to straight up mix what we have and come out with the product we want. Um, from there, pushing more towards the 50 and or 40 and up number, then it's a matter of how much we can drop the pit floor and also the variability of the of the material that exists in the pit, which is hard to predict. So, you know, essentially the, the, my answer to your question would be that we are assured of roughly 25 years of just the product we would like to have, somewhere in that range. And then um, we would hope to be able to extend it for another 10 to 25 years beyond that of yeah, continuing so. ideal product. But at some point, as I said, um, that product seemingly, by predictions of those who know more about this than I do, would be that we're all going to be leaning on that product because it's going to be the only product available. It's available. Yeah. And, and just one quick follow-up. Uh, yeah. I think I understood you to say that if you do drop the floor of the pit, there, there would be more natural bank run gravel yes. and sand that would be available yes. as well as the ledge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's pretty clear right now where the footprint of the ledge is versus the versus the natural product at the height of the floor um, it looks you know we sort of ran through that very non-scientifically looking at roughly seven acres of pit floor right now that's natural product if you were to be able to drop that i i did this again Sort of casual calculations, but if you were to be able to drop that by 15 feet, you would gain roughly 150,000 yards of material. Um, and we don't know what our ability to drop, how, how much we would be able to drop the pit floor. Um, but it, it seems like we'd be able to gain probably 150 to 200,000 yards of material from that. And then if you mix that with ledge, that extends it out that additional sort of 15 to 20 years. Yeah. Carl. Carl Nolly. Yeah. Um, so the the single sheet that lists the projected amounts available, does that that does not depend on dropping the floor? Right? That does not. No, that's ex that's currently existing. And dropping if we were to drop the floor, that would increase all of those numbers by X amount per foot for every foot you went. Um, and again, if we went roughly fifteen feet, I figured it was somewhere in the range of 150 to 200,000 yards. But again, but those that's are... A, that's a bonus that would make our, mm -hmm. our resources greater rather than 
making everything more expensive. Exactly. The, no, I mean, that, as I sort of as I implied earlier, to me, at that kind of 25 year mark, being able to drop that pit floor would make a huge difference in the, the true value. However, by that point, it's already we have broken even as far as we can tell. Um, you know, the other thing, again, you know, if we use all the natural material, the amount of ledge material that we would use in that time period would be relatively low. So for somebody else who was looking for ledge material, that property would still hold significant value. So, you know, that, that would be the time to reevaluate 25 years from now and say, can we get a new permit? Do we want to do this? Is it worth the expense? Or is this more valuable to sell to somebody else and, and we figure out another source and then go from there? But the number of pits that are available, it's seemingly getting harder and harder to get pits through Act 250. Hmm. You know, how that's going to shift 10, 20, 30 years from now, who knows? Because as the resource becomes you know, stays equally important and becomes less available, is the state likely to make that easier or harder? <coughs> Who knows? That's up in the air. Hang on, we have a couple other questions. Go ahead, Mr. Miller. Uh, I've, you've got a great song and dance over a million dollars here, but... I, I again, see... this is not a song and dance. This is, this is well, what we're trying to present as real information. So okay. I, just I, wanna, I just want to try and clarify that we are not, I'm not trying to song and dance or sell you anything. You're the voters. We're trying to present the information that we have. If you guys vote to approve it, great, we go ahead. If you don't, then we don't. No song and dance. I'm not up here dancing. Okay. Yeah. I don't see anything about the interest that we are going to be paying on the note. What is the, it's included, the end term? It's included in there. Yeah, it's in that first. So what is the total end? One million... Uh, the total cost of repayment is that would be. No, it's not there. It's okay. Not oh, total. that's grand. Yeah. Okay, so we'd, we'd have to add yeah, up we'd those have to numbers. Add those. Well, I, I would like to know that. You know, you got a computer, your uh, calculator. It should, we we probably on, have. Uh, I know what mine said, but I don't want to trust mine. Yeah. I'm just an uneducated. Uh, you're a troublemaker. No, no, no. I just <laughs> want to know. <laughs> you you're like Howard over there. You're like Howard over there. You don't have any trust in your elected officials. It's, it's a lot more than a million. Right. Yeah, no question. So, so it's a million <coughs> five one three one seven eight. A million five hundred and thirteen thousand. One hundred seventy eight. So the principal is one million. The interest is five hundred and thirteen thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars. Okay. Well, I didn't see that anywhere in your in your thing, and that for yeah. somebody like me, there's yeah. a big difference between a, a million and a million five hundred thousand. Yeah. I buy a car for a hundred thousand dollars. Now they can my after I pick it up and sign the papers, they say, well, you owe us another fifty percent on top of that. And that is at. 3.84%. Oh, well, your paperwork had it down at four, up to four and up a quarter. Up to, percent. we don't know what it's going to do. Right, but I had to go by your figures. Right, right, right. Okay, and just one other thing, just the town of Putnam. Uh, on page 54 of our brand new town report, top of the page, long term debt. There are errors in that report. Well, we are, according to my paperwork, we are $3,681,000 in debt. And that does not include these interest rates, which run from 3.93% down to 1.75. So, and these are 30 year, 25 year, most of the 15 year, and the rest of five year. Mm -hmm. So given that amount, we must be well over five. There's no, there's no breakdown on this page showing us the interest rates or the, or the bottom line cost. I think there is one. So, just for guesstimation, we're well over five million dollars in debt, and you want us to add another million and a half to that. I'm not shooting down your idea on the gravel pit. I'm no, concerned you're about point. the cost. It's, yeah. Because my tax bill goes up every year. I'd like to show you my tax bill from the 1960s. Same piece of property. 
I, you know, I, I don't know, I, I hear that a lot, and I, I would love to say that we could change that. Um, the, the largest component of your taxes, as I'm sure you know, is education, about two-thirds right. of it. Um, well, we're, we're here to fight about the town. We're right. We're at town meetings when we're going after the school. Okay. I'm just, uh, you, you brought up that your taxes are higher than they right. were in 1960. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what anybody is purchasing that's less now than it was in 1960. I don't, you know, well, I don't. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, in East Putney, where I live, we've got no water, sewer, yeah. sidewalk. And in fact, you're not paying for water or sewer anymore. Sidewalk, you're paying a very small percentage on. Well, sewer is no longer included. You're not making a bond payment on that anymore. And I, you know, I, 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 I guess I don't, I don't want to argue about your taxes. We're presenting information. This is for the voters to look at and vote on. Right. And I, I, you know, we can answer but questions about this. Five hundred thousand, about uh, five hundred thousand dollar omission in your figures is. A it's lot not an omission. No, it's, it's just not. not it's just not it's, totaled. It's all it's in not here. in your presentation. It's on the spreadsheet. Well, though. it actually in our presentation we said we're borrowing a million dollars at four percent. I didn't have the total in front of me of what that ended up. It's right here on the spreadsheet, and we're not trying to hide anything from you guys. I, don't, I just want to make that perfectly clear. Every bit of information is either here or available in town hall, and you're all welcome to it. So okay. that's up to you to decide whether you want to spend it or not. In future, especially on the long term, can we have the the bottom line on these? We'll try and. Do that. If, yes. If you want a new spreadsheet, I can total that column up for you. And I don't just want it. I'm one vote. Yeah. I would like the people on the town of Putney who are voting a million dollars, but are actually going to pay a million five hundred thousand dollars to realize what they're letting themselves in for. Yeah. Well, those are the numbers. So that's Mr. the Grant? interest. Mr. Grant. Mr. Grant, uh, on Main Street. Um, I'm not going to nitpick the numbers. I just want to know the shape of the curve. I don't have my glasses on, and I haven't previewed this. This this chart, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is that based on certain assumptions of usage of gravel, yards, tons, whatever? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cost of fuel, cost of labor, cost of whatever. Very, a lot of different assumptions. Yes. Does that red, do those red bars represent the total operating cost for all the delivered rock and gravel that we're going to use year by year by year by year by year? No, that's one, if it's commercially operated, Doug. Okay, we have two cases. One, we do nothing and we rely on somebody else to commercially operate. Right. And then we, if we buy it, is it the red? The case red a, is, is commercial. And blue is case B. It'd be Putney and Dummerston, okay. so if we owned it. So the question that, is, that's combined for both both towns? Yes. So then the, the question is, is the shape of the curve, not the actual number, but the shape of the curve, the total cost for the labor and the trucks and the overhead and, and the interest and everything, or is there something left out on that curve? Or is this, maybe it's left out, but is the shape of the curve about right? Yes. If we did nothing versus if we do something. The shape of that orange curve, Doug, is a projection if we have to buy commercially, three to six percent increase, and as Renault depletes and it gets exhausted, the cost for us to purchase is going to be much higher. So that's, so that's, total, total that, cost, okay. that's your cost over 50 years. And was the other one the blue, the total cost if we operate with ourselves? It's our closest. Okay. It's our closest estimation. Yeah. So that means we're saving a lot of money over 50 years. Versus yes. right. case A versus case B. Right. Now maybe there's a case C which we haven't talked about. Is there any other alternative that is something in between or lower or higher? Is there? Or we just have two possibilities. Uh, these are the best two possibilities that we that we can come up with. There may well be other alternatives, and I think that's where, when I've said that at that 25-year mark, reevaluating is going to be important. That would be my so, feeling. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I, I see the I see the differences. Um, you may you may be off a little bit here or there, but it's a huge difference. Yes. Now I have a third case which may come to fruition in 10 years. And that is if we start sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere and grinding it up into limestone, there may be another case. 
Now, who knows if that's going to be more expensive or less expensive right. or anything else, but there is a third case and presumably would have some options a decade down the road. So, thank you. Yeah, the other, the, the other thing that I think is the single largest unknown in any of this is none of us can actually predict whether we're going to need all these roads in 30 years. I won't. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we, you know the, the future of transportation is as much anybody's guess as it is ours. Um, you know, are we going to need to maintain our dirt roads 50 years from now? Who knows? You no, know. I, I guarantee you, you will, because we won't have asphalt to pave over these roads. Uh, that so could be true, that. too. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Fairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, although I have not read these Act 250 permits, I am quite familiar with Act 250 and Act 250 permits. Hence my question, uh, the permits certainly require reclamation of the land once the, uh, uh, all the gravel has been extracted. Have you factored that cost into your estimates? We have. Thank you. Yep. Much of the, uh, much of the SB portion of it, the reclamation is all but complete. All of the, all of the surrounding bowl has already been reclaimed because it has been taken to its limit. It's only the floor there that is not finished reclaimed, and that's what that stockpile of topsoil mm -hmm. is allocated for, or some of it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Don Smead. I'm just curious, as a differentiation between Dummerston and Putney, does each town have the right to just go in and take as much as they want? No. Is that, is that recorded, or...? Uh, we we would be keeping records of it. The assumption would be that we would look at it on somewhere in the range of three to five year cycles because if you take, for example, an Irene-like event and suddenly Putney needs, you know, 100,000 yards of material that we weren't anticipating needing, how do we equalize that? So, you know, we don't have that that's part of the interlocal agreement, mm -hmm. and that is not completed yet because that requires state review, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that has been taken into consideration that we would be recording. You know, I mean, we're not going to ask every ounce to be recorded, but that we, you know, we sort of volume of truckloads, et cetera, and try and make it equitable as best as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Jim. Uh, Ellis here. Just curious, is there a, is there a possibility of, of taking another layer at the carpenter pit for another few years of sand? It doesn't, we don't think so. Um, I, that, I, Brian, you want to? Well, I think, I think they're not beyond the Act 250 permit. That from what's there now, it can go down, but that was in that 14 year calculation. So. 14 years from now, that pit's done, and that's the final floor, and I don't think you can really go any lower than that because you'll be down in the brook. And that, again, that's sort of a best estimate. Um, you know, I, my guess would be that there's probably two years plus or minus in that 14-year range, um, but we don't anticipate being able to lower that pit floor dramatically more than where it is. Um, however, in SB and you know, we, sh we should be able to, whether we would be able to. You know, again, hard to predict what Act 250 is going to look like in 25 years, but that would be the hope. So if people have other specific questions, I would encourage you to inquire at the town office. If we feel the need to, we're happy to reconvene for a further meeting on Monday, Mon Monday afternoon or evening if a bunch of questions come up that people feel like they haven't gotten answered properly. Um, yes, Mr. Miller. I think it would, it would only be fair for you to amend your ballot to include your $513,000. So we're going to go from from a million to a million five hundred and thirteen thousand that you're asking the people to vote on. We're voting on a million. We're not voting on on the, the total amount here. Because I, it, it may make a big difference to people who 
We couldn't possibly what? give the total amount because we don't know what the loan rate is going to be. He just said this. Approximately. Okay. Well, it's your your rate. The rate that's on your on this it's six hundred and twenty-five thousand. So either way, it's over fifty percent of the of the bond the is going to be paid Part back. Got to be paid back in interest, and there's no mention of it on your ballot. And I believe that the interest rate is on there for yes. an interest rate. You're right. We did not have a total. The answer to your question is probably not because we probably, this has already been printed and I'm guessing it's already been vetted. Can we alter it now? Legal counsel wrote it that way. Yeah. Bob no, and, and again, we, we, we weren't trying to hide that number from right. anybody. Well, it, I would be very upset if somebody sold me something for a million dollars and then came back and said it's going to cost you a million five. Well, but that's I, not what this says. No, it doesn't. It, it isn't what it says. It says, a million dollars at an interest rate not exceeding for right. it. And I, I totally and get your point. And I those understand. Those of us who are not bankers in real estate, just yeah. say, a million dollars, we're going to buy a piece for a million, that's a million dollars. And then after the fact, when it hits the tax bill, it's a million five hundred thousand dollars. It's gone up by 50%. Sir, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I don't know many adults that don't realize that a loan comes with interest rate. That's the... That's the value that we're buying it for with an interest rate. I think most people understand that. Right, but it, it's much more. It's much more to the point when you can see it in front of you on paper. It's like just the the, the uh, long-term tax debt in here at three million six hundred thousand. When it's a figure in the interest, we're only five million. That's a big jump there. I appreciate what you're saying, and I think that that's included in there. Well, I think it's a it's a good way to step around asking a, a hard question. It's not quite as hard to come up with a million as it is to come up with a million and a half. I, I would just repeat that it was by no means our intention to right. be deceitful in this. We, I, it, I didn't say it, deceitful. I said it, I think you overlooked the fact that most of us look at this as what it's going to cost us. Right. Well, It's not going to cost us a million dollars. Like but said, that's what this spreadsheet is here for. Half. And, I, you know, the other thing I have to say is we've been discussing this for a long time in select board meetings, with the exception of, I think, one, two people in this room, I haven't seen any of you at our select board meetings. And, I, I you know, I, I get frustrated by that because we talk about this stuff on and on and on, and then we come to a meeting towards the end and people bring up things that... Had that been brought up a month ago when we were talking about it in a select board meeting, it would definitely be on here. But we we did the, the best job we could. I, I mean, got the town report and your your postcard, and neither one of them said anything about it. So I'm asking you. Yep, and you're I'm selling us a million dollar program. It's going to cost. Us I'm not trying to sell you anything. You're voting on it. You can vote for it or against it. I'm not a salesman. Yes, but those those residents that are not here are not going to be privy to the conversation we had and they're going to walk into a million dollars, a million and a half dollars in debt. Well, I guess what I'm saying is if people were wanting to pay attention to that, maybe they should engage more and come to the meetings more and then they would be better informed about it. And I understand we can't all do that. But I take time out of my day regularly to do this stuff. I'm not making a bunch of money off this. I'm not selling you anything. It's not my interest rate. It's the Vermont Bond Bank interest rate. You know, I just, that frustrates me that we have these discussions with 25 people in a room when we sit night after night after night with three of us in a room talking about this stuff and nobody comes. So I, I you know, I don't, I don't need to, I don't want to fault you people for that, but if you want to have meaningful discussion about it, you should be present for the discussion. I was at one of your meetings and I inquired about a sidewalk from nowhere. Yeah. And actually, it doesn't go to nowhere. It goes up to Landmark College. Right. It goes as far as Harris Coons Lawn. And, and oh, in fact, sure. next year, it will be getting completed to go up to Well, you certainly Land couldn't spend all the money that we appropriated for it just on the, the few gallons of paint and some curb stones to throw the basket belt. I, I, I don't really know what you're talking well, about. A few years but. ago, we had it before us in town meeting, and, and we some of us bought it. To, to have it. the sidewalk? Yeah, the sidewalk program, and it, it passed, and all we got was a bunch of paint and some curbstones in front of 
Baskerville. I, I think you're mistaken. If you walk up there, you'll find that there's many, many yards of concrete poured, neatly done, granite curbing, and there's paint as well. That justify the amount of money? It's, it's what it costs. I, I mean, I, you know, I... Have I, you put a counter on to count the pedestrian traffic? To Mr. Miller, if you, want, you can come talk is. to me about the sidewalk. Right now we're talking about the gravel pit and we yeah. should move okay. on. We have yeah. a meeting. Yeah. But so, we have done our due diligence on this with the town of Dummerston, and it is up to the voters on Tuesday at town meeting. Cast your vote, and however it turns out, we'll see what happens on Tuesday. I'd like to see the voters fully informed before they yeah. cast their vote. Well, if the voters came to the meetings, they could be fully informed. Can I add something, too? You're yeah. all here right now. You all have friends out in the community. Spread so the word. you right. are right. actually delegates in a way for this issue and you can spread the word based on what you've seen here you, know, you can inform voters and we encourage and we're, you to we're do that. not trying to not inform you we're we're doing our best job to produce the information that we have gathered in order to give you the information we have I, I, under, I fully understand your point about the total not being on there. I get it. I, I, it was an oversight. I, it never occurred to me that it wouldn't occur to somebody that there was a million dollars at a 4% rate that there wouldn't, that, that wouldn't add up to more than a million dollars. Because Dumberston didn't total it either. The, yeah. vol, you know, the total number, the I agree. In the future, if I'm still sitting here and we do this again, I will try and make sure that number is on there. If you had been at the meeting two weeks ago or a month ago or six weeks ago and suggested that, it certainly would be on there. We didn't, we didn't meaningfully leave it out. We just didn't put it in. Yes, sir. I want to commend you all. You've done a good job. Thank and you. I, Thank I you. know a lot more than I knew before. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So there was a question yeah. right here. Yeah. I mean, the 500,000 is yes. included in that chart that has the red lines. Yes, it is. Yes. yes. It shows that that included the difference between having the gravel pit and not having it is that huge gap. Yeah. Yes. And, that, and, 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 and 500,000 is included in the It's spreadsheet. all accounted for yeah. on this spreadsheet. And, and, and you look know, at this spreadsheet. I mean, Karen has put so many numbers on here. I actually emailed her back when she sent this to me for the first time and said, I have an instant headache. Like, so, no, she didn't itemize everything, but she did a darn good job on it. And actually, um, Hugh Warden and Lee Chamberlain had a lot to do with this. Both of Dummerston. Yes. And we both, we all work together to get these figures and of course Putney's a little bit different than Neverston so but and we can't guarantee that all of this is accurate we've done the best job we can right. at, at projecting 25 30 50 years into the future and is it perfect I'm sure it's not is it our best guess yes one other possible contributing factor yeah uh, a few years ago we you put together the town the select board or whoever put together a committee to look into tax exempt properties mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that report was never in the in the town report it's available in town hall if you it was never in it's been like two town reports since then and i read that the committee had been broken up but i've never seen the report i've heard rumors that over 50 percent of the of Putney's grand list is tax exempt. Is that right? There should be a section. Uh, that certainly does not sound accurate to me. I would well, have. You got Putney School landmark is worth millions, and yep. you know Greenwood, all the all the tax exempt yep. colleges. And much which, of that which also has an effect on your tax rate because if if it is in fact half of the grand list is tax exempt. Yeah, uh, it's not half of the, the other half of us are paying twice right. what we should be paying. I mean, what's our total grand list? Two hundred. Yeah, here's this information is here. There's yeah. all your exemptions right there. It's uh, again. This is a, if you have questions about that, you can yeah. come and talk about it at town hall. That's not the well, subject if you of put this together meeting. Together, committee to look into it. Why wasn't a printed report put in? Have the they town been report? active though for the last they two years? They've been disbanded. Not in the last two years. No. Well, that's but they why the issued they done. issued yeah. a report. Yes, they and did. it's available to you at town hall. Not everything print? get. I believe so. Should be. 
probably a month. We'd, we'd have to. Yeah. We'd have to. Well, I don't. I don't have a computer, so online doesn't. You'd have to come into town hall, and we could see. Right. What yeah. We could not see if something is important. That should be in this report. This is the yearly report to the taxpayers. Well, only the information is in in the town report as far as how many properties are properties are tax exempt and how many aren't. Right. Page um, fifty six, Mr. Miller. Pardon? Page fifty six. Page fifty six. So, two thousand eighteen grand list abstract. Halfway down the page, you'll see like veterans exemptions. Yeah. Are you looking for the actual property names that are exempt? No, no, okay. I'm not. I'm looking for the percentage of the grand list that is tax exempt. I, 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 you de we'd have to run the numbers. I mean, I, well, that, well you had a committee that, that looked into this. And that report is available to you at okay. Town Hall, I believe, or the information they gathered, whether but they're... Shouldn't they're, that have been included in the town report? Because uh, it could be every taxpayer have to come in and inquire? Um, I, I, I'd have to look back in previous <laughs> you know, town I don't, reports. I don't have I an have answer no for idea. you for that. Tom has a question. Tom. If, yeah, just a comment on, on Mr. Miller's question. If I remember correctly, three years ago, perhaps, and Carol, you might you were on that committee, you might have a better recollection. At town meeting, there was a separate a flyer available yes. that, in, a, in a verbal presentation I during the town meeting correct. that, yeah. that, that reviewed all that. Yeah. But that mm -hmm. committee hasn't been active since I've been here. No, so. right, right. No. So well, there was a report given was, at yes. town meeting. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. there. And it hasn't been active since, so we wouldn't keep reprinting it. Is that what you want us to do? No, I just wanted it in the book. Oh, it was separately handed out. Right. Oh. Like Don Smead over there, I really <coughs> thank you for the work. And when I think about climate change and I think about Irene, I think, oh boy, I want us to have access to gravel and crushed rock and all those things. It concerns me. And I think if it's a long-term better deal, I'm for it, and I'm grateful. I, I want you to have what you need to keep us moving. <laughs> and, and I think, yeah, I appreciate the work you've done, really. Thank you. I appreciate they did a ton of work, am, these two. And I, and I am going to vote for it. <coughs> so there you have it. I'm going home. Thank you. Good night, Good night. It's icy out Yeah, it's slippery. Thank you all for coming. We're going to move on to the next portion of our meeting. Um, again, if people have further questions, please feel free to contact any of us or go to town hall or whatever works easiest for you. So, you ready? Um, so we are now going to call to order our regular select board meeting. Um, I neglected to close the public informational meeting previously, so I guess I will go back and try and do that. Um, but call to order our special select board meeting at, I mean our regular select board meeting at 627. And uh, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Um, if you'd like, we can move Meg Mott. No, let's, Meg, do you mind if we, how about if we move Meg, um, we'll do the dog sure. situation, then Meg, and then conservation. If that's all right with Ann, you, sure. are you in our end? Yeah, okay. great, thank you. Because I know um, Mr. Temple's been here yeah. a while, too. I know he wanted to hear that previous conversation anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will, it's my turn to speak. <laughs> um, I don't think we're going to go that long. Okay, so um, first thing on the agenda is approval of minutes from January 30th. Yeah, I'll, I'll move to approve the minutes. I second that, sir. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Jump January 30th? No, 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 no. <laughs> February 13th minutes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, my bad. I've got February 13th. Um, so, yes, we will all have. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, it's been moved and seconded to approve the February 13 minutes as presented. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 
That was my mistake. Um, and then <laughs> we have opportunity for public comment on items not on the agenda. Mr. Fairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, concluding my uh, previous appearances about uh, Putney Town Records, mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Rachel Onuf is, uh, is roving archivist for the Vermont State Archives and Records Administration in the office of Secretary of State Jim Condos. Expertly and at no charge, she can visit our town vault, give advice about how our town records are stored, give advice about how to enhance access to these records, give advice about digitizing these records, and provide a referral for her colleagues' advice on how long records should be retained. For the public record, I now understand that Town of Putney staff are scheduling Ms. Onuf's visit to Putney. I thank them and you for making this happen. Certainly, and thank you yeah, for thanks. raising it. And I. She's I wasn't coming. aware that that was happening yeah. yet, so I'm glad I, I knew that our town clerk was planning it and that you all were working together on that. Yeah. So. My source uh, is Ms. Ona herself. So. That's probably a valid source, I would <laughs> <Yeah>. think. <laughs> so, well, good. That makes sense. And I know, I know John has been in touch with mm -hmm. them in the past and currently, so he's yes. trying to sort of get advice from as many places as possible. Mm -hmm. But thank you for keeping us on track with that. You're welcome. Howard, can I have that? Yes, I'll bring it over. Um, all right. Uh, so then we will move on to select board items. And first uh, item is the dog situation, which um, Dale is here and Catherine was here. Oh, there she um, And uh, just so people know, this is related, we've discussed it at a couple meetings now, but this is related to a dog bite that occurred up on Putney Mountain when um, Catherine Temple found a dog who was wandering and brought it, took it in her car, which I gather she is familiar with the dog, mm -hmm. um, took it in her car up to its residence, at which point it, uh, when she tried to get it out of the car, or once it was out of the car, it became aggressive and bit her in the face, and then subsequently bit Dale once. twice on the leg, once on the leg, twice on the leg. Um, and so the dog was quarantined for uh, 10 days, two weeks, uh, but it was a registered dog, had, was current with his shots, etc. cetera. Um, so the discussion has been what the next step for, for that dog is. Um, we had asked at our last meeting, um, Chris, whose name I'm blanking on, DeVito. our sheriff, Chris DeVito, uh, our deputy, um, had, uh, he was the one who had been present at the time as, long as, as well as another deputy, and they came to our meeting last week. He was going to check in with the owner of the dog to see what his intentions were going forward. I and spoke I spoke to him. I don't, and so. I did speak to the deputy today. Um, the owner will be keeping the dog. Um, they are not ready to let it go. The dog is 11 years old. Um, the owner is a veteran. Um, the dog is a, an emotional support dog to him. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get to speak to the owner because he was at the VA, but I did talk to a woman that does live at the property with him. And um, they will be watching the dog closely. They understand that it cannot run at large any longer. And um, they do plan on keeping him. <coughs> um, we. We have been in the process of reviewing our town ordinance related to dogs. Um, as it stands currently, you reviewed the statute and... Yes, I reviewed the state statute and I reviewed our Putney Animal Nuisance Control Ordinance, which the statute actually is embedded into, into, our, yes. into our ordinance. So... Um, Basically, because the incident happened 
on the dog's property. Um, the select board doesn't have to make a decision on having the dog put down, destroyed, however you want to say it. So and we can't make a decision no, on that because no, it cannot. occurred because it occurred on the land on the dog owner's property. Right. Um, so again, because it happened on the property, if it was running at large and it bit them like at their house, then you could make that decision. So. Um, and you know, I, I know that people have encouraged him to dispose of the dog mm -hmm. in some fashion, um, and that he apparently has decided not to do that. Um, I, we, just, I just hate the thought of, a, of like a 10 or 12 year old boy or little girl going in on a bottle drive or something, knocking on that door and that dog attacking. Yeah. And it just about took me down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I still got, you know, welts that bleed every morning from that dog, and that's a month ago. Okay. That's a pretty good bite. Yeah. And if that no, was a little a big kid, dog. Yeah, and, big dog. you know, if they, if they don't, you know, I mean, at 5 o'clock that morning, I was plowing a driveway down the street, and the dog went by the driveway. He was chasing it with his car. He doesn't have control of that dog, especially once it's outside. Now, our ordinance is specific to, um, you know, barking dogs, dogs mm -hmm. that chase runners, vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's a nuisance dog. Yeah. And if it's off the property, mm -hmm. then we can act on that. This dog is laid on my porch. I know the guy. I just I don't think it's a safe dog to have. If it's running loose, it's going to hurt someone again. But we, my, my daughter didn't have a real loose hat on. She lost her eye. Yeah. Right. And I, I, who is going to go to these? The next time that attacks, and if it attacks a kid, who's going to go and apologize to that family that? You know, we had a chance to do something with this dog and didn't. I've had to put a dog down because it bit. Mm -hmm. And I know what it's like. It's hard. But I did it without anybody asking me to. I'm not going to live with a dog like that. Yeah. I mean, this dog is laid on my porch. It's been in my yard. I have a three-year-old granddaughter now. The next time it comes to my yard, it's not going to lay on my porch. Yeah. yeah. And I won't call the police to help. And you're within your rights. Mm -hmm. And you are within your rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah whatever yeah you know the, the the challenge for us as far as this is concerned is that the statute doesn't allow us to take action on mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, but also enforcement um, I mean we don't have the ability to mm -hmm. keep an eye on this dog now, it's unfortunately a, it's, now, it's now public record that the dog has been yes what happens if it bites again good question I mean so at some point, somebody's going to have to either talk with these people about the dog is getting, you know, at 11 years old, a shepherd, and that's a big shepherd, is, you know, he's, he's chance he's losing his mind, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was sitting with that dog and was petting him, and I'm, I'm taking this dog home myself because he's a nuisance around my house when he comes down. And when Eric McGowan got out as a first responder to look in my daughter's eye, that dog then attacked me, just, mm. you know, just like that. Mm. I couldn't get away quick enough. So, After you were petting the dog? Oh, yeah, I mean, I the know dogs, the dog the that dogs. well. Yeah. Lost um, it. So, it's not the first time you brought that dog home. No, either. my dog right. has brought the dog yeah. home several right. times. I have, everybody yeah. has. Mm -hmm. And then when it came clear down here to the horse farm from almost Banning Road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not a dog in control. And do we have any sense, the woman who you spoke with who resides at the property mm -hmm. with him, yeah. does she have the ability to keep the dog restrained or, or She not? said yes. She, you know, they go outside with it now. They don't let it just go outside. So it's leashed own. or? Yeah. So uh, whether or not it's leashed, I don't, she didn't say that. They have a porch that has no uh, exit off of one of the rooms in the little house. Yeah. That they, it's in there when I'm, I plow the driveway. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing, too, in our ordinance, Josh, is so the Animal Advisory Board, um, they actually can take, you know, and speak to people with a dog incident and try to work 
with them. Through the details? Yes. Okay. So the board's supposed to be three members. We have like five members right now, and they're very active. They are revising the ordinances. Um, we've had more than one situation in town, um, and they just keep happening. And um, they're different situations, so every situation we have to look at differently. <coughs> this one was unique on its own because your daughter mm -hmm. brought the dog back mm -hmm. onto the property, you mm -hmm. know. And whatever happened with the dog, who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he might have been thinking that, you know. He was in protective mode. I don't know, um, but one incident doesn't make the dog vicious. It was two. Well, two. It was one day. At the same time. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and that's. I, 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 I don't think Karen, you're sort of passing judgment that that's appropriate. It's just statutorily. Right. That's the reality. Yeah. So the what, other, the what other. Protects us the next time. And well, the other again. recourse for you would be a civil action of mm -hmm. some sort. Which, right. I, you know, right. Yeah. Uh, well, he's been asked to leave the property because of this incident from the landowner, which won't happen until we get to spring. Yeah. So either he moves to another town and someone else gets it, or we get it somewhere else in town. Yeah. Maybe more kids in that town in that area. Right. Um. Well. I think that he has been told that mm -hmm. he needs to keep the dog restrained and on the property. Mm -hmm. And Deputy you, DeVito told him the same thing. Same thing, yes. right. Um, so if you see the dog off the property, mm -hmm. please let Karen mm -hmm. know. I'll, I'll put it in my car. Uh, well, there, that, that's <laughs> the other option. Uh, he likes to ride. Yeah. He doesn't bother until he gets out. Yeah. So I'll give him a ride, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, I think that I think that beyond that, unfortunately, our hands are tied as far as what we can do, other than telling him mm -hmm. that he needs to do it. Again, for us, it's a problem mm -hmm. of enforcement. Um, you know, there was a game warden on premises at the day. Is it's that right? Contain the dog because the two sheriffs. Could, That's right. Yeah, no, I knew that. Yeah. And they brought a game warden in, so yeah. maybe he's got. The next time, some kind of action he can take Might be. through the state yep. to do something about the dog. It's a, sh it's a shame it's going to take a next time I, with I an old agree. dog like that that is very large and very aggressive when he packs. Yep. Here's my thing: is that okay? No good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> but the fact, like the dog was fine. I lifted it up into my car. Didn't make a peep, didn't, you know, growl, didn't. He never nothing. has. After I found it at the top of the hill, and it could have gotten plowed over by a plow truck that morning, like I see it. It's like. Like a kick by a horse. And so then, you know, it bites me. It jumps up, launches at my face as soon as I knock on the door. And then the sheriff, or the fire department shows up, then the sheriff's department shows up. My thing is that, yes, I rocked the dog's world that day. Like, it's different now for that dog. But there was also the other side to where I know that Putney doesn't have an animal control officer right now. Right. Um, so it took two Wyndham County and a game warden and probably at least a can of mace. Yeah. Plus a catch pole. Yeah. And I don't know if there's something in place where like they can instead of going all those steps next time, maybe like call a vet and be like, can you train this dog or something? I mean, I don't know. I know that that's probably not your guys's well, thing, but like there's got to be something else. Cause I felt I've cried about this. Yeah. I feel bad mm -hmm. for the dog. I'm sure. I really yeah. do. But yeah. if I see that dog again, get him in your car. I'm Different not going to get him in my out. car, but yeah. I will. I will run him over. Yeah. <laughs> I will run him over. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was. Scary. We have, you know, the animal control officer issue has been ongoing yeah. for ages. It's. It, we have tried to convince, and we speak about this every time we have Sheriff Clark in for mm -hmm. a review. We speak to him about 
that we feel that it should be that the Wyndham County Sheriff's should try to provide that service for us. The sheriffs in general are not are not trained for that specifically, but they should. But they should. You know, our feeling is that this is a problem that all of the local towns. Brattleboro is the only local town that has. A, a full time that I'm aware of that has yes. a full time yeah. animal control person. <laughs> we can't find, you know, we've we've had animal control officers on and off. Yeah. They tend to last three months, six months, and then, you know, they either don't like doing it or they don't make enough money doing it or they get another animal control full time position somewhere, and it disappears. And this has been a chronic problem for us. Um, so, uh, you know. In the in the bigger picture, it's probably more of a statutory thing, mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you know, a letter to your legislator kind of thing, which I know sounds maybe a little bit silly, but in all reality, until the state gives it some legal backing, there's not that much we can do about it. And again, it's about enforcement. I mean, we don't even have full time right. sheriff coverage, much less mm -hmm. animal control coverage. Right. So that scenario that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Is you know could have been a way way worse way case worst oh, yeah. case scenario, and we don't have the means to manage it. And I wish the sheriff's department would mm -hmm. take it on more aggressively because they're they the ones try. who. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I know. I understand that was a little complicated. Yeah. Uh, I give it two more times to record what happened. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I, the you know. <laughs> well, I heard it was pretty, yeah. We well, heard the story from them. Not a good situation. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys need a copy of the police report for anything? Or no, I have that okay. already. Mm -hmm. All right. And we spoke with both of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they, they shared their go. version right. of events, which lines up right with yours. Yes. So. They heard of Cutney not Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and certainly, you know, if the dog is out and around, mm -hmm we should be notified yeah. as quickly as possible yeah and go from there and I, I i wish i could tell you that we could do more for you catherine but it, it's a reality of what it is and it's a, we know it's an ongoing problem i mean the last incident as you may or may not have known about was a dog attacking another dog mm -hmm. and we didn't have it. in that case yeah. the statute is basically non-existent i mean that you know it's not even considered anything when it's not a person. Involved. Is there a leash so, law just in the city limit? Um, in the village, mm -hmm. yes. That's more than the village. Mm -hmm. It's and, in the and, ordinance. And it's the village and densely, what how many, uh, can you remember? Sand Hill Road. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, Putney Landing, Old Depot. It's basically the extended village. Yeah. Sand yeah. Hill, Signal Pine, Fred Houghton, but does not include, you know, Old Route 5, Carol Brown, all of those. It just goes up uh, to West Hill, though, from Westminster Road. Right. Mm -hmm. Westminster Road. Now, were you at the horse farm just beyond West yes. Hill? Yeah. 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 So it's so, like not too far. Like four right. miles. A long way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And it, something wow. didn't really seem right with it. Mm hmm. Um, but I figured it's exhausted, it just ran. It's not in that great of shape. Right. I mean, it's 11. Yeah, it's pretty rugged. But <laughs> <laughs> it's also in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dear. Can we at least find him for being off leash? Yeah, he was I know. Down. Technically, was no, he was outside, right. Of, that, right. outside yeah. of that area. Yeah. So. Just get him inside the area. Yeah, well, if you had just been off the property, it would be a different story. So. And if well, I had to coax it out. I'm not. It's not in your fault. Oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. It can also, if it's loose, end up right in the schoolyard someday, and then who knows? Yeah, yep. I mean, it's right. not that so far. Right. 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 Yeah, I got a kid over here. I, I, yeah. I feel it. The whole thing is so. I don't know. I'm upset. I feel bad for the owner of the dog mm -hmm. a little bit. But I feel really bad for the dog. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad it happened to me and dad and not some little kid because that dog, even as frail as it looked, that thing mm -hmm. jumped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a big, so, big dog. Yeah. Are all your neighbors aware? At least oh, yeah. everybody oh, in yeah. the community People is aware. The had, mm -hmm. From him had nothing but trouble with the dog and, mm -hmm. and their yard and their animals and mm -hmm. you know. 
Just for safety reasons. Well, I guess he's been there for probably five or six years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand that dogs get away from right. people, but the fact that he was late to an appointment and just said, ah, whatever. Well, and from your reports, I know Dale, the dog is out, has has historically been oh, out yeah. wandering pretty regularly. Yeah, it's so. been all over mm -hmm. Facebook. Like, mm -hmm. it's been to the Humane Society a bunch of times for yeah. people bringing it there. I mean, it's Accountability. That's the problem in, in yes. enforcement. I right. mean, we just that's just that's right. our problem, and the sheriff's right. department doesn't want to do it for us. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, we can reach out to our legislators, legislators too. Yes, we can. I, we've so definitely I've brought it up with Mike well, pretty Mike's much every year when he it's yeah. in, comes um, up. Our when correspondence and I gave so. you tonight. Okay, good. So. Well, so, thank you for your time on this. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, we can't Sorry. do more. <laughs> no, it's all right. At least now it's aware, and if the dog does bite another person, it's not on my shoulders. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. But the thing too is, if the dog is, you know, a nuisance and mm -hmm. not on its property, mm -hmm. that different laws apply. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. See ya. Thank, thank you. Thanks. I hope you do it quickly. Oh, uh, close. <laughs> All right, um, so we'll move now to uh, town meeting preparation, Meg. Um, yeah. Do, I, I don't know that we, I don't know that we have a whole lot we to don't have do a whole with lot. you. It's the piece around Article 8 cannot be discussed. I don't, uh, well, no, Article 8 cannot be discussed. Right. What I don't know is how that then relates to Article 9, I believe right. it is. Right. And I, I, that's a little bit more your wheelhouse than mine. mine. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the discussion that you know people yeah. are going to have questions perhaps yes. about Article Nine, uh, in that they will be voting on something not knowing whether Article Eight passed or not. Right. Uh, my understanding is that what Article Nine is doing is, should it pass, give the town is then authorizing the select board to make that legal contract. Correct. So mm -hmm. it's been split into two pieces. One, the voters are just looking at whether it's a good idea or not. Mm -hmm. And then, depending on what that vote is, if it does pass the Australian ba ballot, then the entire conversation is really, are we giving the town the legal authority mm -hmm. to make that to contract? To, 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 no, to operate the pit. To operate the pit. It's not. It's to, not. Well, a, it's not about the purchase. It's about the operation of the pit. Ah, uh, okay. With Dumberston. With Dumberston, right. exactly. So it's going to be. I mean, it, it, this is why I said subjunctive. It's like as if. We're, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're right. discussing it as if it has passed. Yes, exactly. Knowing that it might not pass. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So it could yep. be a great discussion that then the Australian ballot might just knock out. It might all be right. Right. right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'll just need to explain to the voters mm -hmm. and that when the conversation detours perhaps into the details about Article 8, I'm going to need to say, I'm sorry, because that's being voted on Australian ballot, we cannot discuss that. And I would have to guess, and I, I don't know, because in my time anyway, we haven't entered into an interlocal agreement, uh, intermunicipal interlocal agreement. Um, um, I would guess that we are allowed to discuss the nature of that agreement right. and okay. the implications of it but not the financial implications or otherwise of the purchase of the pit. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not you getting know. into line items about interest rates or no. No. anything no. of that sort. Al although, you know, that interlocal agreement, I, and, you know, I think what we should do before town meeting is probably clarify this with Larry, okay. um, what we actually can and cannot discuss yeah. related to this. Mm -hmm. and. Um, maybe have an example of a similar interlocal agreement yes. that you could review. Um, I think it would be very review. handy that for people to at least know what the terms of such an agreement would be. Would look like. And yes, I know it's too late to get it into the town report. Yeah. But could there be copies of such an interlocal agreement available, sample for instance, or something of that sort? I'm trying to envision how to get information to people about this. About right this. now, it's not. It's not formed. No. Right. No, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. though, is that Larry could probably provide us with an example of one. 
Um, right. It's pretty. I, my understanding is it's pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. It's you know the town of Putney agrees to do this, the town of Dumberston agrees to do that. This is the you know how that works. It's legal mumbo jumbo per se, um, but it's not. That I don't think it's. Uh, it's how many pages is that? Four, five. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, Fourteen page document. Yeah. So. And this is just a draft. Um, it's a draft, yes. Which, if you want a copy of this, Meg, you would be welcome to. Yeah, um, I can okay. email it to you, Meg. Okay, that'd be great. Sure. Um, um, I'm just wondering how for the voters, it's, that's going to be the piece of what does this look like? I don't know what an interlocal agreement is. How can I make a decision when I'm not sure what it is I'm being asked to do? Are you just asking me to rubber stamp something? So, you know, th right. I'm just um, we anticipating. We might be able to do a brochure. You know, it's or kind of, even just a, yeah, just a bullet point right, review of right. this What's would going probably to be, be a good idea. idea. Yeah, if yeah. we can have something visual, yep, that would be fantastic. Yeah. I'll I have to create it, but okay, yeah, you I know there's it. okay. You got like yeah. five days. I'll <laughs> mine. <laughs> I'll mine. I'll mine it out the whole thing. Yes. <laughs> I think just you know, obviously the bulk of it is going to be what's on Australian ballot. Right. But this is going to be a place where people legitimately could have some anxiety, and if they could have more information, so. right. Okay. That's the only piece I was seeing as being problematic, uh, is really clarifying how Article eight is di a 9 is different from 8. Um, nothing else comes out. Yellow Barn will have somebody there to yeah. represent them. Right. So that's is going to be there. Yeah, Sevens. if Karen and I yeah. talked about. So it, and and I'm uh, if there is somebody who's not a Putney resident who may be able to answer some informational questions, I'll ask them. Um, you know, hearing no objections to come and speak. I'm assuming Seved might fit that category. Yes, probably. Not yes. Funny. yes. Yeah. Um, or the sheriff's department. Although Seveds, we have you may or may not know, we don't have a separate article for Seveds this no, year. No, no, we put them so, in the budget. Right, exactly. Okay. So it's a the, right. it's a line item. So they may not even come up. Exactly. But, they, but I think they're going to have somebody right. there anyway. Okay. It will come up. And it will come up. Um, right. But the discussion will the, yeah. the discussion will be whether it's whether it should right. be a line item on going forward. We made the decision that it should. You know, we voted on it three times, I think right. now, right. and, yes, and it passed did. each time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we decided that you know at, at a certain point it becomes a line item because right. it doesn't fit into social services. So, right. Right. Um, the other thing actually that may uh, come up, Meg, is that the sort of question of social service issues. We have one, I, I don't know whether you're familiar with this, but I know you know that Putney Cares and Putney uh, yeah, Community, yes. Putney Family Services <laughs> <laughs> unit merged to become Putney Community Cares, yeah. yes. that's the right name. Um, they have been allocated two Category A allotments from the social service. Uh -huh. We agreed to that in discussion with them when they were talking about merging. Yeah. What's going to have to happen as a result of that is we're going to have to, in the next year, review the social services budget and see how we can alter the social service, the, the protocol for social service allotment. Uh -huh. um, the based, algorithm or whatever. Exactly, because it's just, you know, we, uh -huh. they're functioning as you know, volume-wise, the same way they used to function, but they're now one entity instead of two. So, you know, we're not going to be able to go on funding them as two entities uh -huh. into the future <coughs> unless we have a viable. Right. So that right may come up as a part of the general fund. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the other thing to remind people um, is just that, like, for example, with Seveds, the I don't know what the line item is eighty three hundred dollars eighty four hundred dollars something like, something like that um, it can be the recommendation from the floor to reduce the general fund budget by that amount of money but they cannot specifically say that we do not want to fund Senate so it would be the recommendation of the body that they would prefer that we didn't fund SEVIDs if they were to reduce it by that much, but it's up to our discretion to decide if the budget is reduced, it's right. up to our discretion to decide where that money would be reduced from. And you have pointed to the select board to yes. make that discretion. Yes, exactly. Okay. So if there's an amendment on SEVIDs, I mean, I'm just... Well, it wouldn't, it, what it would be would be an amendment to reduce, if, if people were to decide not to fund or that they didn't 
prefer to fund SEVIDs, it would be a, a, a motion to amend the budget, the yeah, general the fund system. budget yeah. by X yeah. amount. Got it. And then it's up to the select board's discretion to decide. Discretion to figure out what to do with that reduced. Exactly. Right. And, and if, you know, if the body, if the voting body is saying we really don't want to fund SEVITs, we would obviously take that into consideration in our right. discussion about what we were going to cut and not cut. Right. Um, but, but there can't be a specific cut of a line item by reducing the general fund budget. And that's true of all line items. All line items. Got it. Okay. I think. All right. We'll see if that happens, and you will be able to repeat that. But I now have a picture of it. That's, what, that's why I said it, just so that. Okay. And we, most people who are regulars yep. have heard that before as yep. well, so they know that. Yeah, I think I think that's all my questions. Good. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see everybody around nine, nine thirty on Tuesday. Something like that. Oh, and uh, since you're here and I, it's on our agenda, Jared Denord is uh, going to read a, a poem. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I don't I, I don't know whether uh, there was some discussion as to whether that poem was going to be specifically written for Putney or whether it was just going to, I'm not uh -huh. sure, but that, and I, we agreed that it was okay that yeah. that happened sort of before anything else happened. Sure. So I thought we would do that before that, we invite the representatives okay. to speak. Does that okay. sound right to you? That sounds right. We'll begin with poetry and then we'll go to poetry. <laughs> yeah. A few deep me. breaths, some yes. meditation, a little poetry. Great. Excellent. Good. And we might be playing town meeting bingo. Ooh. Ooh. That's in the comments. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? No, I have to go look oh, at that. Oh, go look in the comments. Wow. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> Knitting is a square. Oh, nice. <laughs> so is napping. <laughs> wow. Excellent. That sounds great. I picked up the comments. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank Meg. Thank you. Will that happen before the school portion? The poem? Yes. 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 That will happen. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. The politics yeah. and then the school. Yeah. All right, so next on the agenda, beavers, what we've all been waiting for. Yeah, <laughs> we're eager beavers. We were going to say wetlands. Okay, sorry, <laughs> wetlands. Well, thanks to Karen, we did ask Skipla for a actual written proposal, which we got from him. Mm -hmm. um, and we went through it and decided that we'd made a couple of changes. Specifically, he was going to put fencing on the posts once they were up. We asked him not to do that because it's not a natural material that the thing did for some reason not last. It won't last forever. Um, that it would all be natural stuff that would just go back to the earth. So what we're doing is what's called out west a beaver starter dam. This is just a line of posts, basically. And um, we're doing this because we've always wanted to maintain the main beaver dam downstream of the Santel Road Bridge. It, the pond on Santel Road didn't used to be reliant on a beaver dam. It used to just be there. Right. Uh, but there were some things that happened that made it necessary to have a beaver dam to have the pond at this point in time. Can I just add something right there? The not too long. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, I'm not it's in a, charge. The, um, the, the, the pond and the um, stream used to be at the same level, and now they're not anymore because of the um, stream running. So now when this, if there's nothing holding the stream back some, the, the, well, the pond, uh, pond just drains. You're referring to the pond on the school park. North side. Right. The north right. side of Sand Hill yeah. Yeah. towards Which, Route by five. the way, is yeah. not a beaver pond. Beavers did not create that. It, it was a, something that's just been there. So we, we didn't used to have this problem when the, when the uh, water went up and down in the stream because nothing went down, you know, for it to, for it to take water out of the pond. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They all just went up and down together, but now there's an inequality. So that's one of the reasons why we're, you know, pursuing this. Yeah. Um, thank you. I um, just quickly want to say that um, I have been emailing uh, Fish and Wildlife, specifically Chris Grenier, 
fur bearers and he and um, Tim Royer shared the fur bearer responsibility at Spring the Springfield office. <coughs> and uh, his response was that they have never done a beaver starter dam because we they just do it themselves. Um, that it's very that they do it out west, and it's been done successfully out there. He he was very much aware that these things can be done. Um, he says he has no problem with it, uh, and it's definitely worth trying because it's so site specific, and that beavers constantly put a dam there when they're there. Um, so he said, rely on Skip 100%. That he is a, definitely an expert. He did refer me to Scott Jensen, who's their um, uh, stream specialist, he's a stream engineer. And I talked to him and he said, given what we're doing, which is uh, just posts in the stream, Minimally invasive. minimal kind of uh, attraction to the beaver, hopefully, um, that it wouldn't require any kind of permit. And then he, he said, if I wrote him something, he would email back that statement, and he did. And he's given, uh, and he wants to know when it happens. Okay. Which would, everybody will probably want to know when it's going to happen. What the, yeah. Um, it's probably a little late in that it appears the pond has already totally, pretty much down to mud again, under the ice. And so I really worry about the turtles and the extreme cold. Maybe the snow helps. We'll find out. It certainly helps whether it'll make a um, difference. Yeah. Yeah, and then I did also find from the West from this little packet, if it's any fun for you. I got highlights from some of the things that they did do out West and their reports on the positive things they're seeing in terms of raising the water table, recharging aquifers, um, ameliorating floods, that all of those things in fact are working for them and they had some very specific measurements on different projects and how it works. Yeah, although it seems counterintuitive that a beaver dam would, you know, help flooding. But in fact, if you have a series especially, it's very helpful. Um, so I guess that's it. We're requesting the select board. The total cost is 500. Skip may put in a couple extra posts because we took the fence away. And he thinks that would help make it stronger. Um, and so the total cost is 500. Last night, the Conservation Commission voted to put in 200 of their funds. We're looking for 300 from the select board and approval to go ahead with the project. So moved. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded to approve $300 towards the placement of beaver uh, encouragement. Encouragement um, <laughs> Encouragement posts. <laughs> That's good. Um, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you for be interesting to see. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. There's yeah. going to be interest on this on this figure. <laughs> <laughs> it be, uh, if there were, it would be. <laughs> we hope not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think this is a one-shot deal. Yeah. No, we're not um, going to put these posts up all over the place. I don't think. No, well, and of if course, if there is interest, I'll mm -hmm. personally pay it. There you go. So. Apologies to the decorum of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We take yeah. things pretty lightly most of the time. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know when I'm sure. and take pictures and, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, it'll Can be really interesting camp? to see. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, of course, the, the, the flip side of all of this for me is that, you know, in general, I think, and I think the, the A&R and the state would agree, we shouldn't interfere any more than we have to. Um, and so what that balance is for encouraging, discouraging, you know, then the next time we have flooding, do we go in and tear the whole dam apart and start fresh, so on and so forth? And the answer is no, we don't want to do that. But the nature of the beast is that it wanders and the, the beavers come and go and so on and so forth. So it's all an experiment. People have caused a couple problems in that area. So, and this will help yeah. remediate. That, alleviate some of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's uh, part of the thing. Of we, and we've also talked about how we can manage to see if there is any um, human intervention happening. In the, yes, you know, which we have no evidence we of. We, so, have, and we yeah. do know that um, the road was designed to send all the water under the bridge. Yes. We know that for a fact. Yeah. And that's definitely, if it is just a washout, that's causing part of the problem. That's a human yeah. pain problem.
a hard one to alleviate, though. At this point. So yes. we're not going to change that. Yeah. So we'll wow. do what we can. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Lee. Thank you. All right. Next item. Um, Wyndham Windsor Housing VCDP loan documents update. So this is uh, with regards to Putney Landing. Correct. And it's been a ongoing process getting this paperwork completed. Essentially what it entails is that the project has to be completed and then the paperwork has to be done and then we undertake the legal commitment, the documents. Correct. So it's for $460,000. Um, back in October, you did you signed a resolution for me to sign, but I have the documents here tonight if you want to go ahead and do that. Sounds good. Um, so let me just... Uh, and we did that based on the fact that we thought these documents were going to be ready several months ago when your Windsor was delayed for whatever yeah. reason. But and now all of these there. documents were... Um, reviewed by our legal counsel. Yeah, I saw that. And there's an email saying that in their opinion they're it all, all in order. Yeah. So there's a contract for administrative services and program management, terms and condition contract. The BCDP loan agreement needs to be signed by the town. And then the mortgage and security agreement. And again, the amount is four hundred and ninety thousand dollars. So basically the money comes to the town, and then we just pass it off. We're a pass-through. Yes. yes. And, and then that's we, what the administrative fees are related to. Is and we administer orders. the loan yeah. for the life of that loan. So. And we get paid a little bit for that. And we don't, <laughs> we don't touch, we don't even handle it. It's just no. in and out. So. Good. Yeah, there's no profit on that. No. 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 Well, you get, but there is an administrative fee that was part of it. I can. It's like 5000 bucks or something. I yeah, and I have to, you know, put my time Keep in. Keep it, yeah. Yeah, I have to record it yeah. with the state. Yeah. So. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. And um, So a motion, well, well we've, we've already, we've already done it. Yeah, we've already done it, so yeah, we could just. done the resolution. I mean, if we've already oh. approved you to sign it, then if you want to just go ahead and sign yeah. it. Okay. So that's just All an right. update. So that's our. So that's completed. your update on that. Sounds good. Okay. Next on our agenda is the recommendation to award contract phase three sidewalk construction services. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you saw this. I don't know if it's in your packets. You can do that too. You're looking more at his desk to make you some Yeah. <laughs> So both the state of Vermont and RSG, the engineer, um, they did a bid analysis on all three bids that came in for the sidewalk, phase three. Um, it is the recommendation that we award the contract to Zaluzny, mm -hmm. excavating out of Vernon, Vermont. They are the low bid and everything is in order. And their bid, Steve, was what? Four hundred and sixty-four thousand. Eight hundred and sixteen. There it is, right there. And so once we um, do the notice of award, we will enter into contract with them. So this process is basically getting the paperwork done first. And then we'll do a pre-construction meeting with the contractor, the town, the state, the engineer. And the project can get started as soon as April 15th. Okay. I had a constituent um, request that we start going down River Road next. I was like, let's get, let's get through this first. <laughs> I, don't know, I hear you, I understand, but let's get through this first. <laughs> Somebody asked for old Route 5 and I'm like, and then Putney Landing, and we have to remember too that you know more, more um, equipment and maintenance mm -hmm. needs to be done as we add sidewalks. Yeah. We have to so pile them and yep. Yeah. Well, and then we have our sidewalk fund, right? Yeah. So that puts less and less money per square foot. Yeah, correct. Know, yeah. So I'm all for walking. <clears throat> yeah. But, um, 
Um, I understand the appeal and how it could be good for our community. Yeah, you know, and help help attract wise, yes. well and attracting yep. young families and right. But um, yeah, it's Being a long haul. Right. Um, so I do have a um, grant agreement resolution that the state requested that we have a resolution that stating that I am authorized to sign like the notice of award or you know a contract. Mm -hmm. So I have put one together. And this is the same resolution, except for, you know, Vermont V Trans is on there, as um, the housing. As VCDP. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually took the template from VCDP. But, um, Sounds good. And so this is, this is the. That's the resolution for me. For you authorizing me to sign off, like on the notice of award and any contract documentation for the sidewalk project. Okay, and sorry, I had to step out for a minute. But um, so we did. We are are going to go with Zaluzny, Zaluzny at four hundred and seventy. No, four sixty four. Four sixty four. Okay. Eight one six. Good. Okay. And then this just allows us to get Authorize, the funds for that. Yes. Sounds good. So, do <clears throat> you want our signatures on this, Karen? Yes, I guess yes, so. Yes, please. Okay. So, we need a motion to approve this grant agreement resolution. Yeah, so, I'll move to approve the grant agreement resolution. This is with uh, this is through the state agency of transportation. Yeah. But and this um, is the grant related to, to phase three of the sidewalk. Of the correct. Yep. And the contract with solution. solution. I, I second that. All right. So it's been moved and seconded to approve a grant agreement resolution, single grantee, state of Vermont, um, and this is with regards to the uh, phase three uh, section of the sidewalk and the contracting with. Zaluzny construction to complete that in the amount of 464 816 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, and then the recommendation to award construction inspection services, and that's all part of the same grant as well. Correct. So that falls under that as far as that is concerned, but we need to um, we need to agree to award the contract to, I believe we're going with Pathways, is that correct? Pathways Consulting uh, was the only bid for construction inspection for the sidewalk, and their bid is $49,280, and again, um, will enter into a contract with them, mm -hmm. and the state has uh, approved, them. approved them. So, And we worked with them, I know we worked... Phase two. Was it phase two? or Because I think RSG supervised phase one, maybe, I can't remember. But anyway, Pathways was phase two. Mm -hmm. I think. Was it? I, maybe it was phase one. I think was it phase two? No, I remember seeing invoices when I first started here for Pathways. For Pathways. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Tri -state. Either, either way, we've worked. Tri State was the first one mm -hmm. with M and M Construction. Right. Tri State right. was the was mm -hmm. section one. Yeah. Um, uh, we had good. I, I I I can't remember which section it was, but I know we had good luck with Pathways. We yes. found them to be very responsible and yeah. on time, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, so uh, motion to approve. Yeah. A contract with Pathways for construction inspection services. Inspection services. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so moved. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded to approve a uh, contract with Pathways uh, out of West Lev. Okay. Right. Um, well. Yes. Yep. Um, in the amount of forty-eight thousand. Forty-nine. Forty-nine thousand two hundred and eighty for the purpose of uh, construction inspection services. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, and then we don't have the um, 
a copy. We have a copy of the purchase and sale agreement, but the official copy that's being signed, they have in Dummerston tonight because they're doing the same thing tonight. So what we need to do is to just approve yes. uh, execution of the purchase and sales agreement for the Renault Gravel Pit. And you and should authorize again, somebody to sign it. Okay. Um, I, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Um, so, so I'll move, uh, and then this is what, a, a document? Yep. Uh, to execute the purchase and okay. sale, to sign the sign the execution of the okay. purchase and sales, I guess. I'll, I'll move to, uh, sign the purchase to and authorize uh, Josh to sign and execute the purchase and sale agreement for a node gravel pit with Dummerson. And to accept, and accept the, the terms, terms of, and accept yeah. the, ter the terms of the purchase and sale. I second that. Been moved and seconded to approve me to sign the purchase and sales agreement for the Renault gravel pit, and to accept the terms of the purchase and sales agreement as presented. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I'm not going to gonna sign this one. I'll wait no, because we're only going to sign, sign one. one. Right. Yes. Yeah. Do we need to do a motion on that on the bid to approve? This is different. I, I know, but we never. Well, that was actually, with. Uh, that was okay. yes through VDCP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. VCDP. That was with to you. approve. We approved the grant. And the accepting Zaluzny as the contract. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. You did do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a first. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's been a okay. long day. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this was your. Um, so that brings us to town manager's report. Um, I don't have anything. You've probably done that. So we can. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next would be warrants. Um, where are they? No. Are we going to talk about the letter from Landmark? Yes, that's in other business. Okay. Um, with a few other things. Okay. Go underneath all that stuff. Oh, right here. Put your yay Thank you, Alyssa. Very in there. I'll move to approve and execute the warrants uh, as presented upon review. I second that. Okay. Then I moved and seconded to approve and execute warrants as presented and upon completion of review. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> we'll start with accounts payables. Because we're talking about money. Good. <laughs> February 22nd through March 1st, $1,104,256.37. Boy, you've been busy, haven't you? <clears throat> I'm glad you're sitting down. <laughs> so the two payments for the schools, School. mm -hmm. the final payments are in here. Yeah. So that's why it's high. And, uh, do we have a little checklist in here? I hope. Um, so Putney School was 760. Putney Central School. Putney Central, Putney Central School or district. Putney School. Yeah. Yep. 760,903 dollars. And ninety cents, and then Brattleboro Union High School District was two hundred ninety-two thousand two hundred sixty-three dollars and seventy-six cents. So sometimes there's like maybe a smaller payment that needs to go out. It depends on how things shift out at the they end of the year. Yeah. So there's usually four payments for the school. Mm -hmm. So feel free to look at that. <laughs> and then sign it. Feel free to. That's expensive pants. That must be the fire department. Oh, yeah, there's okay. new, new firefighters. Oh, get, this is all the gear? Yeah. Gotcha. It's almost yeah. two grand in pants. Yep. Nice pants. Well, they're, well, they're fireproof, so. <laughs> well, they are nice pants. <laughs> Have you seen them? I've worn them. They're oh. comfortable. I haven't seen these ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I have, I've seen them. Seen it's them like, in the do past. you go try on all the pants in town? Watch. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> the things that are caught on film. <laughs> well, you know, Josh wears <laughs> pants. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while. I 
that's hold on a minute because there was a weird thing in here. That's the weird thing. Well, this is the one, right? So we actually have two payable warrants. But I'll wait a minute. You can go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this account's payable warrant is dated um, 220. So um, when our bookkeeper was out last week and uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, so we had um, one person that didn't get paid. Oh. It was overlooked. No, that's okay. not what that is. That's not what this is. Uh -huh. That's accounts payable. That was Alyssa um, failed to pay the state and the federal for the um, taxes. Oh. Well, payroll taxes. Right. So yeah. you have to do an electronic right. transfer. Right. And I didn't know to include that in the warrant. So it's yeah. done. Yeah. So it's not, it's a separate. But the payment warrant. was made in a timely fashion. Yeah, yeah. We yes. just didn't have we the just didn't warrant. Have the, it wasn't okay. included in the warrant. Yeah. yeah. And this is a manual, manual pay, right? Right. Yeah. I didn't know that I had to click manual pay. Right. I, so, wouldn't have I would. I was just going to say I wouldn't have known that either. So <laughs> I, we'll I think we'll forgive on. you. <laughs> I know now. So six thousand five hundred fifteen dollars and seventy-two cents. And there is a lot to payables and the payroll. The payroll has to be done before payables. Otherwise, stuff like that doesn't get done. I'm glad you do this and not me. So she does this and not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So on to payroll for March 1st, 2019, in the amount of $6,658.52. And that would be just office and highway department. Yeah, they've been doing. Um, those, uh, it's not stolen. They're fair share. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, they've been doing a great job. I have no. In the rain, the rain has been. Did you listen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, just bits and pieces. Oh yeah, our road had to yeah. come out and mm -hmm. sand it. Yeah. Right. No, they were repeatedly. Yeah. No. It's uh, going after. But a doozy. Deserves going after. Oh yeah. No, I mean, so I tried doing a priest road the other day. Priest road. Oh. Not good? No, it's just like it forked and I stopped. <laughs> it's like, which is really good. <laughs> um, payroll for February 22nd, $14,393.43. This will include the library and on call fire department. Um, the fire department has been busy as well. Yeah, the accidents. Um, the accidents and um, supporting other towns mm -hmm. with yeah. house fires. So mm -hmm. they've been putting some hours. Not yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, we can ask Tom sometime, but but this continues to seem to help with getting manpower. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Was the the way spell was that in Putney too? It's off the highway. Yeah. Yeah. It's, was it? It's a good forward. question, actually. I don't know. It would have been right on the line. Yeah. yeah. It, it's hard to. Okay. Probably Putney, but I'm not sure. It could have been like in Putney and Dumberston. Yeah. <laughs> we could have each been. gotten a little way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> An interesting thing to spill, though. I mean, of all the things yeah, to yeah. spill, it was well, a relief it was funny to read. We were, yeah, we were driving by right when it. The tanker, they were craning it out of there um, and it lurched, and so all of a sudden a whole bunch of stuff pouring out, started pouring out. And my son was like, Dad, I don't think diesel fuel all over. And I'm like, No, I don't think it's diesel fuel. <laughs> <laughs> right. You'd I smell know. it, uh, probably. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it would. Now, then I called Tom and he was like, It was way. So. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it was hard to get that out. Yeah, that's way a lot. Man, yeah. Yeah, that's a sorry little gully. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no pun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nasty little gully down um, there. Oh, yeah, there was a big rig. Did you see? They had a crane in there. Yeah, yeah. The, I saw the pictures. It was, yeah. that before. it was a specialty yeah. towing service of some sort. I'm not yeah. sure they came out of, but. Uh, I don't know where they are right now, so they're in my stuff. They're buried in my stuff. Okay, so uh, other business. You had something you were, oh, the letter from Landmark College um, you were going to mention. There's, yeah, there's quite a few things here. Okay. But, um, so here's your audit. If you don't want to keep it, you can return them. But, but if you, you have insomnia, right. <laughs> this um, is the best. <laughs> this will put me right to sleep. <laughs> I also want to mention while you're flipping through there, the town report is out, and I. We saw it. I do Good. want to state there are errors in here. Um, some names are misspelled, and we truly apologize for that because we don't like doing that. So we did have a uh, resident say that they will proof next year okay good uh, nice. so we had four people looking at this town report and after two months of looking at it looking at it we you miss things your eyes are so placed over. i encourage people to come to us if you see something in here and let us know so we can correct it for next year yeah. but um names are incorrect and the the most important figures are all correct is that right not necessarily our state rep um Nader and becca they both are misspelled um our community service award person misspelled no but but all the all figures the number, numbers. Figures, numbers oh numbers numbers yes our, we, we may have a couple of glitches, yeah. but for the most part our numbers are all accurate yeah we do have an orphan line item <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I call it orphan. The subtitle ended up somewhere in the yeah. middle of the page. Right. Not really sure. yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you, Josh, that the budget numbers do match the article. Good. <laughs> I'm like, that always helps. <laughs> that hasn't been, always been the case. I haven't been able to sleep for the last eight weeks, okay, because I wake up thinking about it. Um, True story. It's not a good feeling. No. Mm -mm. No. It looks like it's a, a random text that, like, Kind of at night. Oh my god! Did you do the I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, don't text me after. <laughs> I don't know. So on page 38, I want to point this out now because if someone's looking at the town report and they're trying to figure out, you know, the bottom line, um, just below town clerk's office, you have a subtotal, and then you have total public safety. Yeah. That line item actually belongs at the bottom of the page. Which one? What? The so total public oh, safety. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. So somehow it just ended up there. It's a strange. Should be underneath the subtotal. Correct. Um, okay. For that whole department there, that whole public safety. I think that's easily fixed with an announcement. Right. But um, somebody else. Of course. Again, you know, we apologize, but we did the best we could. And we always find things after it comes back. It's just, <laughs> just the nature of the beast. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So moving on. So here is a resignation letter from the Animal Advisory Board. From the Honey Lawyer. Yes. Yeah. And then we do have a request that the select board appoint. Janet Langdon is interested in serving on that board. Okay. Do you know I have a so copy of we, this. Yes. We would just like to now, thank my, Honey for yes, her service. Yes. And, um, and she was very critical um, in working on the animal ordinance. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, she did a lot of work. And she acknowledges here that committee work is not her strongest area. Right, uh, But right. we appreciate the time and energy she put yes. in. Yes. And, uh, and I know that she will, she 
has over the years certainly offered opinions what she felt it was important about various things and we yeah. welcome those in the future. So thank you, Manny. Mm -hmm. And uh, motion to approve. Yep. I'll approve uh, to appoint uh, Janet Langdon to the uh, uh, animal or is it the or is the animal, animal advisory board. Animal advisory board for the town of Putney. I second that. It's been moved and seconded to appoint Chairman Langdon to the Animal Advisory Board. If there's no further discussion, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll let her know tomorrow. Um, so you're in receipt of Mike Maricki's email? Mm -hmm. Michael Maricki. So we kind of touched on a couple of those items. Um, that, that's right. Yeah. No, I, right. Yeah. Michael yes, will be at yeah. the town meeting to mm -hmm. discuss is, is that the these it's, items. We, it was a couple of ten days ago or something. We got oh, that. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I mean, the animal bite obviously is. It's not just in Putney. Yes. No, and we've, it's we've, regional. we've yeah, talked about yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's yeah. statewide. Right. It's not a so, um, again, he'll be there at the town meeting. Um, Landmark College, you all saw the letter. Yes, uh, just a brief overview. Peter, a uh, nice letter from mm -hmm. President Peter Eden of Landmark College, um, just reiterating that in the sort of complicated atmosphere that higher education is facing right now that Landmark is very committed to the town of Putney and intends to be here and stay here and, uh, and uh, wants to continue having a strong relationship with the town and mm -hmm. just a letter to reach out and say this is what's going on. So, so we appreciate that information from him because there are clearly many educational institutions that are struggling, and uh, we certainly want to do everything we can in our power to make sure Landmark remains here. a good neighbor and valuable member of our community. So he made an ask in that if we um, would recommend how he could distribute, how they could distribute this letter to yeah. people if they should. Um, it could be available, well, it could be available in the town meeting, I mean, the town hall, mm -hmm. um, and then if they wanted to have a presence at town meeting. I mean, they they typically bring students to town meeting, and mm -hmm. obviously we wouldn't distribute anything at the floor, on right. the floor right. but there will be tables set up, I believe, in the back room, so if they wanted to do something for that, I can't remember. I don't remember them having done that before, but they would certainly be welcome to do that if they wanted to. I, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what the process <laughs> is for that. Do people come and ask you for... Um, not me questions? specifically, yeah. but Jonathan. So the town clerk, because oh, it's course. his floor, Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's voting, and um, yeah. so he allows, and there's certain things you can allow, Yes. And other things you cannot. So. Mm -hmm. Very and I, basically anything that potentially would influence a vote that's occurring on that day, you cannot have information right. related to right. it. And then there are a variety of other things too, but that yeah. will not be mm -hmm. related um, to this. I know next stage will be there. Yeah. Um, there's a couple tables, bake sales yeah. happening. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. But I mean, if it's promoting their organization agency, then it's they always... They should probably check with John. Yeah, I recommend that they talk yeah, to him first because I don't know how much space is available either if it's a I'm first sure come first I mean often they set up the, the ballot box or the uh, voting booths along the right Westminster West Road side of the gym in the town meeting area right. but sometimes they do it in the back so I'm not yeah. sure how they're gonna that's up to him well no they'll they'll have it in the front part of the gym still they'll Pull that screen so that they'll have everything set up for lunch. Lunch and the and tables. All, and all and the voting will be in the town meeting area. So, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, that's how yeah. they usually do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's how they've decided. Okay. So something about this letter that um, 
really struck a chord with me was the last paragraph. I don't know if you took note of that, but what I read in what he was saying to us as a community was that there have been issues with inclusion um, and that there is a need for community members to recognize that, um, uh, how did he put it? Um, our ethically diverse students and some autistic students may worry that they are not readily accepted. Please do all you can to be open and accepting of all LC students, even with small gestures. And he underlined this. And based on some feedback I've gotten from the community, um, this really struck a chord with me. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it a little worrisome that they felt that they needed to include this in it. Um, sparked that desire that I had when I first started on here to um, explore a uh, diversity committee of yeah. some kind. Mm -hmm. So um, in my free time, which I have <laughs> two minutes of a day, um, that's something that I really want to pursue and I hope to find support, Karen, especially from you because I don't even, I have a lot of information from other towns that I've compiled, but I really yeah. don't know where to begin forming a committee yeah. for. That's a tough one. I mean, I, you know, uh, to start with, just more discussion about it. Mm -hmm. um, right. But yeah, forming a committee, um, we could certainly explore that. Well, I think uh, we have to come up with a charge. A charge, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. You know, um, what is it we're looking to do? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think we uh, could explore. Most helpful is to have somebody who's interested in spearheading that. And yeah. right. that, that may, you, you may well want to sit on that committee, but you might also prefer to have somebody else sort of take it on as a mission. Um, if you can find something. Well, I used this opportunity to reach out to them um, and share that this was something that I was interested in doing, had been interested in doing historically. Reached out to Landmark. Yes. Yeah. Um, I responded to this. Uh -huh. um, obviously, I didn't include you guys because we'd be breaking oh, open yeah. meeting law, but it's, mm -hmm. um, and uh, let them know that this is something that I'd really like to pursue, and I hope that I can pull them into it as we get going. I would love to see Landmark pulled into it and the Putney School um, and Putney Central and, and businesses yeah. and... Yeah. I mean, there's already diversity mm -hmm. community here, which yeah. is nice, and it would be interesting to see what... Putney School, Putney Putney School, School has yeah. both faculty yeah. and yeah. student committees. It, I had yeah. a very limited conversation with a gentleman up there almost a year ago now, um, and it's amazing how quickly a year passes. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm not. I'm not just it, in this instance. I'm not aware of specific. I agree with you that it's interesting he chose to underline this. I'm not aware of specific incidences, but that doesn't mean they haven't occurred. Right. Uh, and they they may well have. I would hope and encourage if there's anything that even comes close to being, you know hate crime related that they would reach out to one of the county sheriffs. Yeah. Right. I that. would too. Um, but I but I I certainly am more than happy to have that be mm -hmm. part of our discussion as well. And his response to me was that it seemingly is I, what I took from his response is it sounds like there's more microaggressions going yeah. on than anything else. Yeah. Things that people aren't aware of in yeah. their own behaviors and their own cognitive dissonance. But um, it's concerning. It's you know this is an important institution in our community, and everyone here should feel welcome. And um, so I would like to to pursue addressing that. You know, and one thing I would suggest, I guess, is um, to help some of this. And I don't know if you mentioned it there, but um, is to have a. I mean, if they could ha invite public have a forum, public for a forum discussion. Mm -hmm. for discussions yeah. to help yeah. disseminate some of the information about you know right. different spectrums of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, just because I think a lot of people don't know. And yeah. scared sometimes of what they don't know. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. so that's I I hope that we are able to maybe invite them in and continue these conversations yeah. or start these conversations. Yes. Yeah. No, and I think that would be, you know, a, a committee, you know, one charge of a committee could be to promote open discussion mm -hmm. right. um, yep. and, and sort of how, how what that would look like and how yeah. exactly how, yeah. how it would go forward. Be. 
I think that there would be community interest. I think it's just a matter oh, of sure. getting the ball rolling. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and that's where is it, Karen? I, I don't know what I'm doing. So, uh, I, I can put it out there. I can right. encourage people to participate, but I don't know exactly how to how Form to go it. about yes. forming that. Yes. So, Putney School is also in a current search for uh, a, a person who's going to be that hasn't been titled yet, but somebody who is going to be a diversity sort of specialist coordinator um, cool. within Putney School, of which there are several already who their significant focuses of theirs, but this is going to be a, a position. Uh, and, and, you know, whether that will be filled soon or not right away is a little bit hard. You know, it would depend on the candidates, et cetera, but they're in the process of exploring that possibility. So, uh, that would be a good resource. Yeah. 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 You know Michaela Sims? Too? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She's the BHS person. Yeah. yeah. I just, I've worked with her in a very limited mm -hmm. fashion, but yeah. yeah. She knows her stuff. Mm -hmm. she, she does. Okay. You got more? You all set with me? Yeah. Okay. So I sent this in the packet as well for a gas tax. Because mm -hmm. of, I don't want to talk about this right now. <laughs> I know. Well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we don't have to talk about it, but we have it, so we should, you know, yeah. um, think about it. And, I mean, that ties into our whole discussion with the gravel pit, too, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and I think Rattabro's instituted, I could be mistaken, but a gas tax. So, or they're thinking about it. Yeah. So I think towns are leaning towards that idea. discuss further what yeah. we have on the yeah. agenda at some point. Um, so there's a grant writing workshop if anybody's interested in Bellas Falls coming up on March 22nd. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing this. You I are? Think, um, yeah, I think so. I think this is the same one I'm doing. And then there's a community and economic development forum March 27th, Burke Mountain. Anyone's interested in that? Mount Snow does quarterly ones um, through EDCC. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll be having a spring one coming up. Um, here's Select Board Institute invitations if anybody's interested. Um, this would probably be good for the new. You did that. Is last that VLCT? I did, and I yes. found it very helpful. Yeah. So it's. A lot of information. Yeah, it is. I would even consider doing it again because I feel like I don't absorb everything in one shot. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, um, so I already have a copy of that. I've gotten, I have a, I feel like I have ten of these. Yeah, I have. I've got really one of those. All right, I can take them back and I'll put them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's so expensive. Um, that's and lot. here's two um, notes that from the community that I think Town of Putney Highway Department sending much appreciation for all you do to keep our roads clear and safe. Oh, how lovely. That's from Elizabeth Fox at 87 Old Stage Road. And yeah, then, that's on there. Hello, Putney people. We miss you so much here in Burlington. We, Ben and I, oh, huh. Ben and I, I can brand, lived in Putney for so many years. Groundhog predicts that we'll have early and wonderful spring. Cheers, I Kim Brent. They were longtime residents up on uh, uh, Dusty Ridge Road. And that's very that's nice. nice. That's very really nice. Yeah. Um, one other item, in, item, sorry, it's about time to go. <laughs> so I was at school today and um, I spoke to her. Uh -huh. Saw the ice rink. So the ice <laughs> rink out here, yeah, where he's recommending that um, because it's going to be a liability unless it snows, it is completely ice. They, they can't sand, they can't saw because yeah. they're in the field. Yeah. He recommended that we shuttle people from. to from park and ride yeah. by the fire station yeah. to town meeting. And or if people can carpool, that would be wonderful because there will be limited parking Very down here. Limited parking. Mm. Um, 
I think maybe we can reach out to Landmark. They have the small, short yeah. shuttle and see if we can maybe have a driver or two. Yeah. But what is your recommendation for time? Every 15 minutes, every half an hour? How, how do you do that with... Ooh. I think at the beginning of the day, you would have to do it more often yeah, and at the, towards the mm -hmm. end of the day, which we don't know when the end of the day is. Yeah. So, um, and then yeah. in between like every hour, half hour, I don't know. Yeah, half hour would probably be. Well, in the morning, we'd be busy. Right. So 10 a.m., we start town meeting. Right. So we want to start shuttling at quarter of four Until it ends. Do we have someone that works in the parking lot? Because we're going to have a problem with people that just want to come to vote. Mm, we're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Circulation is going to be people tight to, out who there. Be in and out. <clears throat> um, who do, should do reserve you, the front circle one it. for people who just want yeah. to vote. That's a good idea. That's yeah. yeah. a good idea. Have somebody standing there and, you know, voting only sign. Right. The parking. Maybe yeah. you could involve Tom in this conversation and mm -hmm. see whether he has a recommendation and or... I did talk to uh, Brian and Tom earlier before yeah. the informational meeting, and um, they didn't have any suggestions. <laughs> but he said the shuttle is a good idea. Yeah. And um, uh, the problem is people aren't going to know about it, so they're going to come here first, and mm -hmm. then we'll have to yep. shuffle them out of here. Huh. That's a great way to start a town meeting. Yeah, no kidding. Plus, <laughs> we have handicap too. There's no designated handicap right. parking out there. It technically is, but it's you wouldn't know it unless you really knew where to look for it. It's in this horseshoe. Well, Jonathan yeah. purchased handicap signs to have out there Good. for that purpose, but we still have a problem with parking. Yeah, it should make this horseshoe, I think, the side horseshoe. Yeah. should be handicapped. I don't know. Except that's a fire lane, so they can't. Yeah. They that's where. Can do some, but, but the the actual handicap spot is. Yeah, no, you're a, right. Maybe on the inside of the horseshoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should see no, I mean, whether Tom can put a little more thought. I, you know, I don't want to add something to Tom's load, but um, mm -hmm. you know, he's probably sort of the best equipped to think this through a little bit. Maybe sure. the snow we have right now is taking care of. Might issue. cover it up, but it might. But it's still going to be slippery. Yeah. So I just don't know. I don't have an answer. No, I don't either. I don't know what How many people do you I think anticipate? Next year. Boy, it can a couple hundred? Yeah. Yeah. That's next right. year we should entertain the idea of asking Landmark if we can have it there. Yes. Good possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Several locations there that are big enough. It's a really yeah. good idea. Yes. All right. Anything else? No. That's it. Okay, so our next meeting, oh, this is complicated because our next meeting, I'm, meeting. I'm out of town, right, well, town meeting. Town meeting, 10 a.m. I'm out of town from the 6th to the 14th. Sorry. Um, um, and then uh, Karen is going away. Hopefully. From the 15th to she the is something. Yeah. She's I'm putting her, her ticket. <laughs> putting me on the plane. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking probably what we should do is have a meeting on that, whatever that Wednesday is. That's, I'm looking at the weather. Uh, the Wednesday, Wednesday, the following the, Wednesday. The, so, so you're back when? The 13th, the 20th. We should probably have a meeting and at least do warrants and warrants and uh, the reorganization. The twentieth, I think it is, isn't it? So That's Wednesday, yes. We're going to hold off on reorganization and not like. I'm the leaving next. the day of town meeting. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. You don't have to worry about it unless you're going to jump in. You're done. Oh yeah. yeah. Unless he's going to hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> On, another three years? <laughs> well, you can show up. I, mean, I can, yeah, well, I can. You can have your own this. replacement, so we're going to appoint you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to announce that while we're sitting here? I'm not sure yeah. that's mm -hmm. legit. Right. That there is not a slot. There, there's an open, there's an open seat on the select board that does not have a person 
on the ballot, ballot for it. So, uh, so it's a write-in. So it's a write-in. Yeah. Yes. So or it could be a write-in. Um, so you're leaving the the, the, the day after. of. We're leaving. Oh, the fifth right. right. town meeting. Yeah, right after okay. town We're meeting. Yeah, you'll be here for town meeting. Yeah. You're both leaving. <laughs> Part of it anyway. Don't stress, Steve. No, we don't. We don't overlap. <laughs> okay. All no. right. I didn't. I was looking at whether I did not fully absorb the dates. I'm sorry. I'm looking at March. Sixth to fourteenth, and then you're going fifteenth to something. Yeah. Oh. March. The week of March eighteenth through the twenty second. Okay. Twenty second. All right. Because we didn't. We didn't have a planned select board meeting on that week. Uh huh. See, so I'm working my vacation around select board. Thank so, you. Um, and our next regular one would be um, March twenty seventh, and that's like. We should we should have a meeting on the twentieth, and we'll just yeah. we'll just make it warrants. So we won't do yeah. it on the thirteenth. We'll do it on the twentieth, and then the next week after that would be our regular meeting. Yeah, yeah. We'll and we'll really back just back. do warrants yeah. on the twentieth. All right. And at five thirty. Yeah. Okay. Do you want that filmed? Uh. Probably don't need to, no, because no. it's not a regular meeting, so we'll we'll warn it. But no, well, it'll, be, it'll be sort of a minimal meeting. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh, we'll be back to our regular right scheduling. So we'll have a brief meeting on the twentieth, and then a regular meeting on the twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. And Steve will be with us. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. He might show up though. Right. Right. You could just keep showing up. You know? <laughs> uh, he might have something to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if we don't have anything else, motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Seconded. Aye. 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 Thank you all.